I'm Holden. And I'm Jackson. And we're straight out of comics. Straight out of comics, straight to the point, Jackson. Okay. First off, news. Oh, news? News. Um, we got our first look at Black Panther, kind oh, of. Oh, really? Okay. Um, it's on the set of uh, Civil War. Um, they're filming it now in Berlin, Germany. Um, we didn't get an official look, but we do have on. There's on set photos that leaked um, of Black Panther's costume. Um, it's not actually Chadwick Boseman. It's a stunt man, but you know we actually do get to look at his suit, Captain America's suit, and Winter Soldier's suit. But it's not really a suit. It's just a guy in like a jacket and jeans and a backpack. But did you get a chance to look at these pictures? Uh, yeah, I did. I did take a look at the Black Panther, and uh, I mean, I thought it looked great. I thought it looked. Uh, I thought it looked pretty cool. I mean, he had the little like uh, teeth on his arms and mm -hmm. kind of had a motorcycle helmet head, and so yeah, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it looked pretty good myself. Yeah, I mean, it does look similar to the concept art that they showed. Yep. But I am just kind of a little, I mean, maybe a little worried just because it doesn't look great. And I mean, it might just be because it's a stuntman suit or whatever, and that it's supposed to, it was created to be more built for like a harness or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that might be the reason it just doesn't look great to me personally, but... I mean, whatever it'll be, whatever, it'll probably end up looking a lot better than it does right here. Yeah, I think you can't always really trust the set photos on those sort of things. I mean, <clears throat> we've kind of we've kind of seen that before where we've seen outfits and they've kind of looked a little iffy in the set photos. But in the actual movie, you know, they're made to look cool. And especially like with the stunt thing, it looked like they were hooking them up to a harness it looks like, you know, possibly even the motorcycle helmet type head may not be on him in the movie. He may have more of a cloth helmet, but he may just have the motorcycle helmet looking thing just for the actual stunt. Mm -hmm. So, and that may be taken out in post or, you know, we really don't know what it's going to look like except for we can see the accoutrements and then it's sort of, you know, kind of going for the same thing as the concept art. So, uh, so yeah, from there... I mean, it's pretty exciting. I'd like to see Black Panther. I got faith that I think it'll probably be pretty good. Yeah, I don't really mind whatever they do. I'm sure it'll be good, so. On to the next one, Jackson. Oh, the next one. The Flash. The TV show The Flash. Oh, yeah? Um, the new one or the old one? The new one. Okay. <laughs> yes, the old <laughs> one's coming back for a second season. Oh, no. No. Um, it's going to be annoying with the first, with the new one out there. No, but the new one uh, has cast Dr. Light. Oh, really? Yep. So they cast, like, a weird, like, rapist-like guy? To no, no, Dr. not the rapey one. Not the rapey one. What? It's the, the good guy one, the female Dr. Light, the Ooh. female version. Well, that's not as interesting. <laughs> yes, I, I, don't, I don't really want to see that one. I'm kind of glad you they moved the, on. You don't want to see the rapist Dr. Light? The Identity Crisis one, they bring in the Ralph Dibney and them and... Well, they you know, do maybe crisis. you just cut it out. You just have them rape like Irish or something. <laughs> no, yeah. I don't. I don't want to see that. I don't want to <laughs> see that. Snow. I don't want to see that. Okay. I'm but not. they've cast the female version, the good guy version of Doctor Light. Um, mm -hmm. She'll be played by. Um, wait, no, sorry. She. Bleh. Sorry. She'll be. What did you do? Just... I'm reading the article. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't prepare ahead for these things. Okay. Well, just make sure you let the audience know because it almost sounded like you just had an. I know. Alzheimer's yeah. I'm, attack. I'm like. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Well, they don't care. Nobody's listening. Um, the actress will be Kimio Hoshi. Kimio no. Hoshi. No. Because, no, there is no actress. Nobody's been announced yet. There hasn't been an actress. But the character's coming. The oh. character's name is Kimio Hoshi. So. So no, but they did not cast her. They've just announced that she's going to be on there. Yes, yeah, she's going to be on the show. It's going to be the woman. Yes, it's going to be the female not version, the guy. not the guy. But they it's haven't be... confirmed whether that character is going to be a rapist or not. I guess, but she may rape Barry. Yeah, but I mean, whatever, Jackson. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> 
But the character, Camille Hoshi, Dr. Light, is coming to season two of The Flash. So, what do you think? What do you think? Um, yeah, exciting. I'm always up for more superheroes. Did you heard about that? I wish they, I, I do genuinely wish, genuinely wish they had gone with the villainous version. Even if you don't, you know, don't make him a rapist, that's too heavy for a CW show. But, uh, but yeah, I think they are in need of more cool villains than they are other cool heroes. But, you know, hey, whatever. <laughs> whatever what floats whatever. their boat whatever floats their boat you know it's not like it's anything that makes me mad and I'm like ah, I don't want to watch this yeah female Dr. Light awesome is it awesome Jackson? I think it's awesome Dr. Light's got some pretty cool powers okay well powers on... of light and stuff I mean yeah cause can't light like stuff. can't they uh, like shoot beams of light or whatever shoot, like... you know it's it's I mean light powers <laughs> Whatever light powers means to whoever's writing it is pretty much the powers that they have. I mean, sometimes they can make solid light constructs like Green Lantern. Sometimes they can make beams of light. Sometimes they can make themselves very light and fly. So it doesn't... <laughs> it's kind of a wide array of powers that, uh, that they have. Well, we'll be excited to see what they do on the show. They probably will just make it like beams of light because... Probably. Knowing CW, they probably won't use like great special effects. It'll just be like, okay, beams of light. So, whatever. But on to the next news, Jackson. Okay. Star Wars. Star Wars? Yes. Star Wars The Force Awakens. Um, a leaked picture of Luke Skywalker surfaced. And did you get a chance to look at it? Uh, I think so. What did you think? I thought it was like, oh, he looks like Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like Luke Skywalker, but just really old and dressed up like uh, old Ben Kenobi. Mm -hmm. He was, uh, yeah. It, I mean, I guess didn't do a whole lot for me, but uh, but uh, but yeah, it looks all right. It's, it's, it, I mean, it's good that they're not making him look like he's dumb or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, hey, everybody, I got a leather jacket on or whatever. Yeah, he doesn't have some leather jacket or he doesn't have, like, you know, he's not, like, horribly scarred or something. Yeah, I mean, he just looks like, um, you know, Mark Hamill except with a beard. Mm -hmm. He's got the big cloak. Because I think there were, like, rumors of, like, you know, that Luke Skywalker may be, like, half man, half machine or something like that. He might look like the Terminator or something. And I don't think that would really fit. So I'm glad <laughs> that they kind of went with the <laughs> with We don't the know. They might, add, choice. they might add some CG to that or something. And he might be like... Or maybe, yeah, he'll take off those robes and his entire body will be a robot. Yeah, which like, is his head stuck on it. Like that um, Brainiac in. Oh, yeah, like those concept uh, drawings of uh, Brainiac for the Superman Lives movie. Where he's like a man in a cloak, and then he takes the cloak off. He's got spider legs. He doesn't have a body, he's just a head attached to a bunch of like really long spider legs. So yeah, I'm glad that they didn't go with any of the Superman Lives concept on <laughs> Skywalker in this movie, because I don't feel like that really fits. So I think they're pretty, they're pretty good going for the obvious choice of just being like, you know, let's just take Mark Hamill as he is, have him grow him out a beard, give him one of those outfits that uh, Jedis wear. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, on to the next news. We're leaving Star Wars and going back to the Marvel Universe, Jackson. New Mutants, or at least the Fox Marvel Universe. New Mutants. Um, did you hear, I don't know if you were up and up on the New Mutants news, but um, nope. they, they had hired writer-director Josh Boone, the guy that did Fault in Our Stars, oh, to, yeah. uh, I guess, write and direct the New Mutants movie. Um, and he just tweeted out saying that, you know, that they're writing the script. <clears throat> So they hired the dude who made Fault in Our Stars to make the uh, New, New Mutants movie. movie. Uh -huh. Well, that was pretty good. I had actually had not heard that news. So, yeah, New Mutants, pretty cool. You got characters like Danny Moonstone, Star, and uh, I don't know. Cannonball. <laughs> you don't know Danny Moonstone? I know Cannonball. Isn't he like the, isn't he kind of like, he's got like fire powers or something? Oh. Maybe I'm thinking of Sunspot. Sunspot would be there too, though. But Sunspot doesn't have fire powers either, though. He had fire powers in uh, Days of Future Past. Well, that's, <laughs> that's just because they were like, you know, we got all these old animations of human toys. <laughs> you know, can you use these? And they were like, sure. No, Sunspot, let's go through a cannonball, has the powers. He's like the southern like kid that's like, hey there, everybody. And then he's got the powers of, like, you know, 
he can turn his lower half of his body into like a rocket or whatever and fly around at like super speeds. That's what that's what Cannonball does. Yeah. Oh, well, then maybe I have seen that somewhere. I don't know. I mean, it, I never read a lot of like, New Mutants see, or like, even X Men. The f- top half of his body and the like lower half is just like fire, just like like a okay. rocket. Yeah, I've seen him before. And then he can like, and I think when he's flying, he's also invincible. So he can like fly and just like bash into a building or something like a cannonball. Danny Moonstone has like you know, the powers to, like. Create illusion based around your greatest fear or something like that. Excuse me. And Sunspot has the powers to, I think he can absorb sunlight and make himself stronger and more invincible and things like that. Oh, so he doesn't have fire powers? I don't believe he actually has fire powers. Now, I'm sure at times they have given him fire powers. The name like Sunspot, powers. you'd think he'd have fire power. Yeah. But Sun. I think. Fire. But if you really think about it, it's the sun spot. And the sun spot is like an area of the sun where there's not fire. So. I guess. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a sun <laughs> expert, but I've seen pictures of sun spots and it seems like areas where there's no fire. So maybe sun spot uh, does make some, somewhat sense, so. But, well, it just seems like they're moving <coughs> on with that. Um, he, uh, the director, Josh Boone, tweeted out a picture of the script that he's written so far. I think he's finished the first draft. Details? No, it's just like, like, it was just a side picture of like a big stack of papers. And he was like, script's first draft's done or whatever. Yeah. So, but it looked like it was really thick, so. Hey, I mean, it's like I, <clears throat> perhaps I said last week. About uh, them making these Fantastic Four movies. You know, just throw away the whole concept of doing these Fantastic Four movies. Just concentrate on other X-Men stuff. You guys are doing that pretty well. You know, just make us a New Mutants movie. Make us an X-Force movie. Make us an X-Factor movie. Make us an Exiles movie. Make us an X-Static movie. (laughs) (laughs) You know, just make us everything. Just give us whatever you can. Don't make any more Fantastic Four movies, <laughs> please. I'd rather see Ecstatics. Yeah, because at this point, I think Fantastic Four is almost like scorched earth for a while. And I think even if like Marvel gets the rights back, it wouldn't even be like Spider-Man, mm-hmm. where they could just like, well, we'll just reboot it. It would be like, we'd have to like slowly introduce these characters back into like the, the universe, mm-hmm. into the world. So, but yep. That's moving on, so hopefully that won't suck like Fantastic Four. Hopefully not. On to the next news, Jackson. On to the next news. Next news. Is. NBC, Jackson. NBC. I actually had this one ready, but I just wanted to take time to build suspense. Okay. NBC, NBC orders is... a pilot for a DC Comics wor- workplace comedy. Called Powerless. Really? Mm-hmm. So it would probably be like The Office meets. I guess it would just be like The Office in the DC <laughs> universe. Because I was going to say like heroes. Marvels or like, you know, Kingdom Come or something like that. But Kingdom Come eventually just reverts into the story about the superheroes. So yeah. it'd probably be more like Marvels, where it's just like a guy walking around and he's like, look at all these Marvels. Mm hmm. Or whatever. Yeah, so it, that seems weird. It just seems like they want to make a show that's like The Office, but every once in a while they're like, you know, uh, Superman is fighting Lex Luthor again right outside our building. Uh, yeah, Batman's fighting Joker again. I wonder where they'll be. Like, will they be, like, in a city? Will they be, like, in Metropolis or Gotham or, you know? Or will yeah. they just be, like, in New York or whatever? Yeah, yeah I don't know where they would be. Because I would say probably Metropolis would be best. And then that way, you know, you could have all these earth-shattering fights outside. Like, you know, oh man, you know, we lost like two-thirds of our entire staff when Superman and Zod destroyed the entire city. So, well, I wonder what they'll and do. And is it going to take place? I mean, that's that's another weird thing. Like... How many universes is DC going to have? It's like, is it going to take place in the DC Cinematic Universe? 
I doubt it. I think it'll probably be more like a traditional comic. I think it'll probably be more like a traditional comic universe, which I don't know. This might not even come to pass because I hope not. Remember, they were talking about Jessica Jones having a show and stuff, and that never happened. I mean, it's happening, but it was supposed to be more like this with Jessica Jones, Mm -hmm. where it's going to be in the Marvel universe and you'd see Spider Man and stuff. But I think that this will probably this probably won't happen because it'll be too weird and people will be too confused by it. But I do think that. It would be interesting to see them in a more traditional comic universe, because then you could have episodes where they're like, you know, Superman's dead, and you could have like the whole Doomsday storyline happen and stuff, and mm-hmm. like they're like everybody's mourning because Superman's died or something, or Batman's died or something like that. So it would be it would be cool to see all that stuff happen, but okay. but you reckon there will be like superheroes in the show? Probably not. Like not at all. Like. You know, there may be like an episode where like they're like, "Hey, we got this, uh, we got this guy coming over to report on our business or whatever." Clark and it's Clark Kent. I doubt it. I like, think they're just the, guy, they the just owner of our it. building is coming over, and he's Bruce Wayne. I doubt it. They just mention it. They might mention that. Oh, the owner of this building is Wayne. Oh, we got this or whatever. fancy test pilot coming over. <laughs> <laughs> we got this Amazonian princess coming over. <laughs> We've got this. Demigod coming over, it's Shazam. You know, it's just like... <laughs> yeah, this little boy, <laughs> Billy Batson, just stopped by our place, or, you know. This Martian Manhunter. <laughs> <laughs> the King of Atlantis stopped by. The King by. of Atlantis stopped by. Um, yeah, who else? The Flash. <laughs> this, uh, you know, CSI guys stopping by. Yeah, asking us about a murder. Yeah, I doubt it. I think it would just be a lot of mentioning P characters and people and fights and everything like that. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I, I don't think it would be that great because it would be like 22 episodes and most of it would just be like... It'd be like all the worst parts of Smallville. <laughs> it'd pretty much just be a show about like the worst parts of Smallville, but without the characters. Any of the cool stuff. Yeah. Just be all... Like- well, because at least with Smallville they had all that stuff, but it was still, it was still Clark Kent Superman. And stuff, and it was like, okay, well, but at least it's still Clark Kent Superman. But, like, now you're just going to be like, Joe Smith and, you know, Sarah Smith or whatever. You know, you're not going to be like, you know, they're not going to be like Bruce Wayne or Clark Kent. It's just going to be like nobodies that aren't even, like, real in the universe. Yeah. I mean, it'd be better if they could have thrown in something, like I said, like a Jessica Jones, where it's like she's an actual character in the Marvel Universe, and she gets to see all this stuff happen, but... This is just sounds like it's going to be like The Office. DC has that. never had a comic book like that, so... Yeah. I mean, other than, like, Gotham Central, which the Gotham TV show is kind of like. I mean, really, they should just m- merge these two shows together and just make Gotham Central, because <laughs> that was a good comic yeah, book. Yeah, that would have been better. And it would have been better than Gotham and this thing. Ugh. Yeah, because I, I remember listening to Fat Man on Batman, Kevin Smith's podcast, and he had um, Kyle Higgins on there. The and he, Higgs. Yeah, and he was talking about like his like top favorite like Batman stories or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he put Gotham Central on there, and he was talking about this I, this um, storyline in there. And I was like, oh man, that sounds way better than like anything mm-hmm. I've ever seen on Gotham. Yeah. And it was just because of the fact that like you know, it was just it was just like a cop show, and I think Gotham is trying to be like a cop show meets Sopranos meets you know, Arrow, and it Mm -hmm. just doesn't work. Which I think all that would be fine if it took place in, like, modern day where there was a Batman. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it takes place before Batman leaves them so tongue-tied to the fact that they can't, you know, that they've got to exist in this weird, like, Smallville-like world where, like, all the villains are there, but they're, like, young men who are kind of like themselves... Yeah. Anyways. On to the next news. Um, D23, Jackson. Disney's D23 happened uh, this past weekend. Yeah, this past weekend. D23. And, um... What do you reckon the 23 stands for? Oh. Okay. I mean, because it doesn't mean like the 23rd con, con convention or whatever. Is it's it? just like... I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I've never had to follow D23 because nothing <laughs> ever cool has been at D23 <laughs> until okay. this year. So, well, 
they uh, Marvel Studios was there, of course, because it's under Disney. Yep. And um, they kind of had a little convention panel thing going on there. Since they weren't at Comic Con, they decided to come here um, and actually show some stuff off here. Um, so they showed off some Civil War stuff. They didn't. They weren't really able to show off Doctor Strange stuff, but they had concept art. Uh, I think Benedict Cumberbatch had like a video mm-hmm. that he sent out to people, and. I think the director had like something he was talking to people about too, but um, big news was the Civil War. Some Civil War footage was shown, and um, you know, from what I've heard from other people, they said it looked really good. Yeah, um, I mean, I think in the descriptions that I read, going back to the whole Black Panther thing, they said that the Black Panther costume in the footage looked a lot better than what we saw in the set. On the set. Or so. So, I mean, if if you're a little discouraged from that, you could take that as solace, that it looks better. Well, do you want to go over the uh, the description? Yeah, tell me or what do the you wanna... description is. Okay. You know, well, I'm actually surprised that they didn't release this footage. Well, I, I figured they wouldn't, because like I said, like I told you earlier, Marvel has never done it before. You know, out of all the Comic-Cons, out of anything that they've shown, they've never released it same day or a week later. They usually release it on their own time. So I don't know why all of a sudden they do that. I, I figure that what they might do is they might release it when Shield Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. come back. Maybe. They probably will show it then because that's what they did for Avengers. So they'll probably show something then to be like, watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and you'll see the Civil War trailer. And everybody will be like, uh. <laughs> You gotta make me watch Agent of Seal. Why you gotta do this to me, Marvel? No. But um the footage that was shown though, um <coughs> I got the description here, I'll just read it off. Um it says cast Captain America it starts off Captain America and Crossbones in costume fighting mm-hmm. and Crossbones is telling Cap that Bucky remembers him. Um then there's a lot of General Ross narrating and stating that the world isn't secure or the world isn't sure Captain America is a hero or a vigilante. And that, the, and that shows the Winter Soldier retrieving a severely wounded cap from a watery fate and walking away, which I guess that's from... Yeah. Into Winter Soldier. Um, and then it shows Scarlet Witch employing a Lucha Libre-esque fighting move in a crowded action sequence. So I guess she's, she's fighting. I guess she's hand-to-hand fighting now. She's like, I don't want to use my powers. She's like, I'll use my what? fists. Who is this? It says Scarlet Witch. Oh, Scarlet Witch. Yeah. Okay. Not Scarlet Johansson. Yeah, Scarlet I always Witch. get them confused. With yeah, Scarlet I always, I always, call, Scarlet I always call Black Widow Scarlet Witch. But it's funny because I don't call sure. her Scarlet Johansson. I call her Scarlet Witch. But <laughs> whatever. Um, so she was using a Nacho Libre. So she's, libre, she's using, well, Lucho Libre. <laughs> okay, not Nacho Libre. In a crowded action sequence. Winter, then it shows Winter Soldier talking to Cap and showing signs of regaining his memory. I think the line was that like he remembered his mom or something like that, making him a breakfast or whatever, breakfast sandwich. Um, <laughs> and then there's a brief look at the film's previously pub- publicized funeral scene, um, a quick peek at the vision, Black Panther in costume, then Tony Stark telling Roger, sometimes I want to punch you in your perfect little teeth. Then it shows Iron Man and War Machine standing side by side in full armor, then Hawkeye and Black Widow fighting each other, and Black Widow asks, are we still friends? And the re- Hawkeye responds, depends on how hard you hit me. Then the reel ends with a comedic scene of a starstruck Scott Lang, Paul Rudd meeting Captain America for the first time, and he says, thanks for thinking of me, he tells Cap tongue-tied, which he means to say, thanks for thinking of me. So, cool. Also, it says in the footage that you see um, Falcon, and there's um, Falcon's trusty sidekick is in this movie as well. Just like Captain Red America's Red? got Bucky... Falcon will have Red Wing, his trusty hawk, oh. on his side. You think in the next movie, his hawk will be the bad guy, and they'll have to chase down Falcon's hawk, and I, I, you didn't get no. with me on this one. <laughs> no, no, I don't. No. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, because I was, I was looking at all these, but I was looking at this um, description, and it's just a, <coughs> it's a bunch of different descriptions, so... I was trying to look over here, seeing like, oh, what's all this other stuff then? And it's just the same thing. So. Yeah, well, that sounds really great. I mean, it sounds like <laughs> this is going to be, sounds like this is going to be more of a sequel to um, Winter, Soldier. Winter Soldier than Avengers, which is good, because that's what it is. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be really good. 
I mean, I think it will have it will have a lot of elements within it. Like, I think it will have a lot of elements from Age of Ultron, Winter Soldier, and even maybe even um, what you call it, Incredible Hulk too, with Thunderbolt Ross. So, yeah. depending on what happens, it seems like though that the big, it seems like the big um, main plot that kind of revolves around everybody is Winter Soldier. So, mm-hmm. with that, I think that that'll kind of like you said, that'll be a big major plot point in the movie. Okay. But yes, on to the next news, Jackson. Did you have anything else to say? No, no. I thought, uh, yeah, it looks awesome. Awesome, dude. On to the next news, Jackson. Back to Star Wars. At D3, at D23, they also announced the director of the Star Wars 9. You know who that is, Jackson? S- director of Star Wars 9. No. Colin Trevorrow. Ooh, Colin Trevorrow. Trevorrow. Who's Trevorrow. Colin Trevorrow? He directed Jurassic World. Oh, really? Yeah. You so, knew that. <laughs> so the guy that directed Jurassic World is going to direct the uh, the new Star Wars movie. Yep, the last, well, the last one in there announced. So, J.J. Abrams Star Wars is Wars. the first one. Ryan Johnson, who yeah. made Loopers, the second one, mm-hmm. and the third one... Is Colin Trevorrow. Is Colin Trevorrow. Yeah, and I think that they uh-huh. said that J.J. And, and Lawrence Kasdan wrote the first one. The second one, I think, is solely written by Ryan Johnson and directed by him, too. I think so. I'm not sure. Yeah. And then the third one's going to be written by Ryan Johnson, too, so... Hmm. Okay. Colin Trevorrow, which I mean, what do you, what do you think? What do you think? Uh, you reckon it'll have dinosaurs in it? Uh, maybe <laughs> some <laughs> some dinosaur like you know. Like at this point, I like to think of it as like J.J. Abrams is doing like you know, kind of like a Star Trek with this first one. Ryan Johnson's will be like Looper. It's time travel. Where it's time travel, they <laughs> weird go back makeup. in time and kill themselves with weird makeup and stuff. And then the third one, they'll find themselves on a dinosaur <laughs> planet. <laughs> a truly a Jurassic World. Yeah, so uh, so yeah, I'd like to think of it like that, but I'm sure they'll probably do it good instead of my ideas. Yeah, <laughs> probably they'll probably they'll probably be more of an even story. Yeah, they'll probably you know all the directors will probably mesh into like one pretty good. You know, they're choosing guys who I think uh, you know they're doing a good job where they're like choosing directors who are like good directors but don't have, like, a overbearing style. So I feel like, except for J.J. Abrams with the lens flares. But it seems like J.J. Abrams is willing to compromise yeah, on never that. Se- I haven't seen any lens flares in any of these trailers. Yeah, like so. I said, I think J.J. is compromising on that because he loves Star Wars more mm-hmm. So than he did Star Trek. So he probably compromises on that a lot better. Like I said, he he's going back to the roots of it all, using practical effects, shooting on film, mm-hmm. and doing all this stuff. Um, shooting on location instead of like big green screens. So you know, it seems like they're all and they all three seem to be like big, huge fans of Star Wars. You well, know, who isn't? Yeah, I mean, who isn't you? But <laughs> I mean, you're not a big, huge fan. I'm not a big, huge fan. I appreciate them and I really enjoy them if all. They, I'll see all of them. If they hired me to direct Star Wars, I would become a huge <laughs> then fan. Then I would be a <laughs> huge fan. But yeah, I mean, like I said, I appreciate them. I think they're all fun. I even enjoy the prequels. Oh, I do. Oh. I, I like I said, I grew up on those prequels, so it's like those are my movies. A lot angry. of like older I people. Hey, they're just old people. They need to move on to the future, man. The future. Yeah, the future of those terrible prequels <laughs> with all those racist stereotypes in it and packed CGI. Oh, I thought, well, that's, that's Transformers. That's not Star Wars. Uh, that's both of them, right? <laughs> Don't you remember Jar Jar Binks? He wasn't racist. Yes, he was. He was just stupid. Yeah. Well, <laughs> which race do you think they were trying to say was stupid with Jar Jar Binks? Mm-hmm. Jamaicans. They were? Yep. Look it up, oh, mate. Did you hear about that? That um, Michael Jackson really wanted to be Jar Jar Binks? Oh, yeah. I heard that story the other day. That's weird. And Would the, that have been better? Because he said he wanted to do practical, like he was going to be in makeup and stuff. You know what? I wish I had seen that instead of what they gave me. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think it could have been much worse. 
even, you know, if it was Michael Jackson, at least you'd be like, you know what, it was Michael Jackson. Yeah, you could have been like, well, yeah, I love him. It's, you know, King of Pop, Michael Jackson. Yeah, and you know? he probably could have done a song for Star Wars <laughs> that probably would have been like pretty Star good. Misa! Jaja Binks! Ow! Do you remember the time? When we watched Star Wars. But, yeah, I thought that was interesting. But, what were we talking about? <laughs> Colin Trevorrow. <laughs> Colin Trevorrow. He's directing episode nine. I enjoyed Jurassic World. I thought it was fun. It had its, it had its flaws, but it was still overall a fun movie, I think, that, you know, within this world that they're doing with Star Wars. They'll be able to come in and do a really good, fun movie. Mm-hmm. So... We'll see about that, Jackson. Yeah, clearly, the guy can be successful. Yeah, he made, the, I think, the third movie. highest grossing movie of all time. Now. Yeah, I think it's third, and it was the biggest opening of all time. Of all time. It beat out Avengers, so. So, yeah. You throw the director of Jurassic World up there, and people will probably be like, ooh, I really like Jurassic World. Yeah, but then they'll be like, but it's also Star Wars 9. <laughs> so it's like, you don't really have to throw his name up there. <laughs> <laughs> I already went to see Star Wars 7. I saw eight, Star I Wars 7. I don't know if I see Star Wars 9. Well, I don't know who's directing it. Yeah. Oh, it's the guy that did what you will call it. Yeah, I don't think they're going off of name recognition <laughs> for these to where they'll be like, from the man who brought you Looper. <laughs> Come Star Wars. Hey. Star Wars. Yeah, I doubt that. But I think they're going off like Star Wars probably is big enough draw. Yeah, Star Wars. I don't you know, know if anybody's... Original cast members. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's famous enough to be like so-and-so in Star Wars. No. To where it's like it's a bigger deal that Denzel Washington is in Star Wars or that, you know, Tom Cruise is in Star Wars. I don't know. I think if they have Denzel and Tom Cruise in there, they could they it could market them. It would be a big them. deal, but it wouldn't be bigger than Star Wars. I think maybe not, but I think you would still throw their names up there. Yeah, you would throw their names. I mean, you'd still be like, Tom Cruise, Denzel, in Star Wars. I think I'd still put them in... I'd still say that they're in Star Wars. Because people go see Denzel movies because Denzel's in it. People go see Tom Cruise movies because Tom Cruise is in it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like... It's not like people are like, oh, I, I like Star Wars, but I'm not, I'm not really going to go see Star Wars. And then they're like, but Denzel's in Star Wars. And they'll be like, well, Denzel's in Star Wars, so I got to go see this movie because Denzel's in it. But I digress. On to the next news, Jackson. D23 news once again. Doctor Strange. Oh, yeah. Like I said, they, they talked about Doctor Strange. They didn't really have anything to show. They haven't started shooting yet. Said they started shooting in, like, November, I think. So, they don't really have anything, but they had a lot, heaps of uh, concept art and all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, Benedict Cumberbatch's stupid thing. But, um, <clears throat> but yeah, um, did you read anything about what they were talking about there? Not at all. Not at all? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Not well, at all. well, within with um, Benedict Cumberbatch's little video, like I said, he had something there where he's just kind of like, "Hi, fans, what's up? I'm Benedict Cumberbatch, but you know that." <laughs> he was talking about like um, you know the character of Doctor Strange, and I guess his his how he described Stephen Strange was very much so like um, Iron Man. Mm. They said he says that the. Uh, says here in the video that he promised that the character will get girls, cars, explosions, and astral projections into multiple universes. The usual fare. Really? So it seems like Doctor Strange will be full of, like, you know, getting girls, getting cars, explosions, and actual projections. Really? Yeah, I mean, like I said, Doctor Strange, Stephen Strange, before he becomes Doctor Strange, is very much like a Tony Stark. He's like a very cocky, arrogant... You know, neurosurgeon or whatever, mm-hmm. surgeon. He's like a really famous doctor. He's like Dr. Oz. <laughs> well, I guess Dr. Oz. I mean, which would be interesting if they do that. Like, he's like a, got like a talk show TV or something show. or a TV show. But yeah, he's like a big, you know, cocky, arrogant surgeon who uses who loses his ability to use his hands. Like, you know, he loses nerve endings that he can't really move it right. You know, he can't move his hands or nothing like that. And he uses magic. To try to heal it, but they still can't heal it. Science and magic can't heal his hands, man. Mm. But he becomes the he becomes the sorcerer supreme, and is you know just as badass 
and he kind of be- he learns to become more humble with within that. So okay, so it's kind of similar. It's very, it's actually very similar to Iron Man. I so just I, think. It, I just feel weird picturing Benedict Cumberbatch doing all that stuff. Where like you know he drives in with a car, he's got two ladies on his arms and stuff, and the ladies get in his room and they're like you know oh there's all these other panties in here too, and he's like I know, like, I know right, <laughs> I know. Benedict Cumberbatch, yeah. you all my Cumber bitches. Yeah, I mean oh, yeah, call me Ben. It might be weird, but I mean like I said, Cumberbatch is probably. He's he's a pretty charming Brit, you know. I always have this weird thing of like, there's not a lot of those like like funny charming British men. Like Patrick Stewart is probably number one for me. Funniest, charmest, charmingest British man. Yeah, well, just because I, I I like the fact that he's kind of like, he's just really he's just really silly, and I really like that about him. That he's like you know he's Sir Patrick Stewart. He's a great actor. He's always like serious in his movies, but then when you meet him in person, he's like really silly and funny. And I think that's cool. Hmm. Maybe you should have played Doctor Strange. Maybe. But, you know. Alright. But, yeah, like I said, Cumberbatch seems like he's got a good sense of humor. Um, so he might be able to be, like, you know, funny and stuff in it. And I don't really know. I think there's a lot of people that really think he's good looking. I think he looks funny. He looks <laughs> like an alien. So, we'll see about that, but... It says that Kevin Feige was talking about that he just wants to expand the, what the comic book movie is and what the Marvel Cinematic Universe is. The comics traverse these dimensions in film by film. We try to do that in a cinematic way. It's going to be as satisfying as, as any movie made and as weird as any movie we've made. He's an extraordinary character. He's an extraordinary character, brings in a whole other dimension, hmm, multiple dimensions to the Marvel Universe. So, it sounds like they're really trying to make this something different. And I think that's good. Because that's what, like, Guardians did. And I think Guardians worked really well. And Mm -hmm. I think Ant-Man tried to do that, but it was too rooted in, like, science and Iron Man-ness to really get out of that and try to make it different. I think it tried to do Iron Man, but different. I think, I mean, it's... I feel like the... Things that Ant Man opened up was it opened up sort of more like a family friendly, like world of like a almost. I mean, because that movie is almost like Liar Liar or Mrs. Doubtfire, but with superheroes. Yeah, I mean, it is with the fact that he's like you know a deadbeat dad or whatever, dead and he's like, dad. It just, I want to be Instead of like dressing kid. up like a woman, he dresses up like Ant Man. <laughs> and instead of having the powers to always tell the truth, he's got the powers to shrink down to ant size. Which I wish that would have been a bigger part about the movie, though. That really wasn't a big part of the movie. Was like him and his kid. I know they kept saying it, but he wasn't like, you know, I want to see my kid or whatever. But I, I still enjoyed it. Like you said, it was very family friendly, and I think that was a cool aspect that they tried to do with that. And this sounds like this might be like, you know, horror, you know, creepy, weird, you know, from all the descriptions and stuff. It seems very bizarre and otherworldly. So that'll be interesting to see. Okay. Um, yeah, but, you know, so far they've just got Benedict Cumberbatch, Chiwetel. Edgio Four, Edgio Four. I'm gonna say it how it's spelled. Edgio Four. It's probably he's playing Baron Mordor, and um, Tilda Swinton's gonna be the ancient one. Huh. So good cast of characters they got there. Yeah, yeah, good cast. Like I said, I still think uh, Jackie Chan should be in there as Wong. Maybe Wesley Snipes will be Wong. Now, I think Jackie Chan. I was thinking about it the other day. You know, I was thinking back to the old uh, Karate, the Karate Kid remake that they made with Jaden Smith. Mm-hmm. And you know, I think the thing is, is that that movie suffers now because Jaden Smith is so weird now, and people don't like Jaden Smith. Mm-hmm. But because I remember when it came out, I liked it. You know, I really dug it, and um, I just don't remember anybody really saying that it was terrible. Now I think people say it's terrible because Jaden Smith did like After Earth, and he's so like annoying and weird now. Mm-hmm. On but Twitter. yeah, on Twitter. But I think Jackie Chan was the best part of that movie, and I think if you bring that element of Jackie Chan into Doctor Strange, you shave his head, you make him like a monk. You got a kick-ass movie there. Yep, and he's all sad that his family died in a car crash. Well, you could do it to where it's like um, you know Doctor Strange goes to the Ancient One or whatever. Because uh, 
Isn't it like he goes to the Ancient One and then like Baron Mordo kills the Ancient One or whatever? And he's like, you killed the Ancient One. I think he tries to kill the Ancient One and the Ancient One is like, you can't kill me, son. I'm the Ancient One. I'm the Ancient One, bitch. Maybe that, that's how they should do it then. Like he goes to the Ancient One and Ancient One's got Wong there. And it's Jackie Chan, and he's kind of like, you know, a peaceful monk servant like guy. And he's like, you know, helps the Ancient One around and stuff. And like maybe Baron Mordor kills, you know, the Ancient One. And then Wong's like, I don't have anybody else to follow. And he's like, you could follow me, Wong. And then him and Jackie Chan. Because like I said, I think Jackie Chan would be a really cool, like, counterpart to Benedict Cumberbatch's... Doctor Strange, because you know, to me, I don't, I don't really think ben, Stephen Strange has a lot of character outside of like before he becomes Stephen Strange, mm -hmm. and I think that Jackie Chan, Having a funny sidekick, yeah, fu a funny sidekick, and he can like also do some karate stuff. Like I think that'll be really cool, and I think, like I said, if you make him more like Karate Kid Jackie Chan, where he's a little more like, oh yes, you know, because he was even like walking around funny. He had like a moment of him like you know you know, bursting out in the anger because he was like, my family's dead and stuff. Like, I thought, I thought Jackie, like I said, I think Jackie Chan was the best part of that movie and he gets underrated because everybody hates Jaden Smith. But! You digress. I digress. Uh, did I have, I had something here. What was it? Oh, yes. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about this or not, but that, um, big theory that's going around on the internet about the Joker. Oh, Yes. We have to touch on the theory about the Joker here. What's the theory? <laughs> the theory <laughs> is is that um, you know uh, Jared Leto's Joker mm -hmm. um, in the movies, the picture that they've released at least. Um, you know he's got all those tattoos and he's got like scars and stuff. And a lot of those tattoos, you know, one of them's like a bird and mm -hmm. like one of them's like a J. And a lot of them got ha ha ha's and stuff. And people are just like, you know, why would he have all these tattoos? Joker doesn't seem like he's that type of person that has tattoos. And what people are speculating is that in the Batman v Superman trailer, we see, you know, the shot of Robin's costume. Mm -hmm. And it obviously spray painted, ha ha, jokes on you, Batman. People are speculating that the Joker is actually Jason Todd. And that he was somehow brainwashed or just beaten into you know, going crazy and turning himself into the Joker. Mm -hmm. um, and I think pretty much that only arises because in the Arkham Knight, spoilers for the Arkham Knight, and spoilers for the movies too, I guess, because if this happens, then people are going to be like, hey, you said this happened. And... But nobody's listening. Um, <laughs> um, in Arkham Knight, you know, um, Jason Todd is in it. Yep. He's the Arkham Knight. But that's not a spoiler. You should have known he was going to be the Arkham Knight. <laughs> um, but it's revealed that it's similar to Death in the Family. He captures him, beats him down, you know, and eventually brainwashes him, breaks him to the point of, you know, almost revealing who Batman is. And then Joker, like, brands a J onto his cheek and stuff and finally shoots him. And then it's revealed that it's, he didn't die. He's actually the Arkham Knight. But he's still got that J on his face. And people are, uh, are speculating that since this new Joker, Jared Leto's Joker's got a J on his face, maybe he's like Jason Todd, and the Joker got a hold of him, bro broke him down, turned him crazy, and then, you know, sent Batman this thing, saying that, like, he's the Joker now, or whatever. So, people are speculating that now that Whoa. Jared Leto's Joker is the bat, is, uh, Jared Leto's Joker is Jason Todd. And also, new news, new things have arised where if you look at the Batman v Superman picture of the Robin suit, there's two bullet holes like on the shoulder and on the other shoulder, on both shoulders. And then if you look at the Joker's, the picture of the Jared Leto's Joker, there's two little scars on both of his shoulders too, matching up where the Robin suit is. Yeah. I mean, you know, honestly, I think this makes a lot of sense. I mean, for one, we all don't like the way the Joker looks. I, like I said, I think that's what it is, With is that people tattoos. hate it so much that they're just like, well, maybe he's just Jason Todd and he's not really the Joker. we got to figure out ways he's not the Joker. <laughs> I mean, because cause... it makes a lot of sense. I mean, a lot of people have said that uh, the tattoos make him look like somebody who's like a fan of the Joker would have. Mm -hmm. Two, he's got a J on his face. Maybe that J is for Jason, not Joker. 
Uh, he's also got uh, a Robin tattoo. The bullets match up perfectly. And then also, <clears throat> the one thing that I thought would be, you know, kind of... Oh, uh, another, another piece to support it would be uh, in the Dark Knight Strikes Back, which we know that... Uh, you know, Zack Snyder take, is taking a lot of uh, inspiration from the Dark Knight books. Uh, the uh, former Robin, Dick Grayson, becomes the Joker in a manner similar to what we're describing with Jason Todd. Now, an argument against this would be that uh, Jared Leto is like, what, 40? Yeah, he's about the, he's he's the, the same, same age, age as, as Ben Affleck. Affleck. So, but... He does look a guy. Yeah, he yeah. looks young, <laughs> for one. And for two... If you guys remember, when they were casting the Joker, they originally wanted someone else. Ryan Gosling? Someone who's only 34, like Ryan Gosling, who could have been a young Jason Todd to uh, Ben Affleck's 42-year-old Batman. So, you know, I'm just saying, as far as that... that that's uh, like eight years. I mean, it's yeah. not like this. I mean, that's like but Chris O'Donnell, George Clooney. Well, there you go. <laughs> you know, sometimes Robin is uh, shown to be that way. It's more of a, not like a father and son, but like an older brother, little brother, like Chris O'Donnell. Well, I mean, yeah, because you always, because Batman's always like, what, like 35, 34, something like that. 33, Jesus years. Mm -hmm. And then, like, Robin can grow up to being like 30 <laughs> or whatever. Well, you says eight years. Or it's like I mean, say this Batman, or like something. when Ben Affleck started out, he was like 25, and... This Robin is like, what, 16 or something when this all happens. I guess. So. Yeah. I don't I don't think it's true. I know the bullet holes match up. The bullet theory. The bullet holes match up. The exactly. bullet hole. The <laughs> bullet hole theory here. I know they match up. The but there's holes. but there are more bullets here that don't match up onto the Joker's body. So Well, if you look at the other bullets that don't match up, they're more towards the chest where he would probably have more like bulletproof protection right in the chest. So that, I would say that explains why he doesn't have the scars there. Mm. I don't know. I, I, I don't think so. I mean, I guess, but that would just be, I mean, maybe not even that. It's like I said, the precedent has been set. I in, mean, but would you... In the classic if, stories of The Dark Knight Strikes Back and in Batman Beyond the Joker, uh, Return of the Joker. So, Robin has been the Joker before. Jason Todd has never been the Joker, but uh, they may be mixing those stories up. And as we know, Zack Snyder, big fan of the Dark Knight series, perhaps he thinks that that'd be a good well, idea. Nay, not the series. <laughs> That's the one book. <laughs> we People know don't he's count a big fan Knight. of the Dark Knight. We don't know. We don't know whether whether uh, whether uh, what you call it likes the Dark Knight Strikes Back. Maybe David Ayer likes Strikes Back, and he's like, you know what we should do? <laughs> Maybe Zack Snyder does. Maybe Zack Snyder is like that weird guy who's like, you know what? I like Strikes Back better. <laughs> <laughs> For well, then why did he make that Batman more like that Batman? <laughs> that Batman seemed to get along with everybody better. <laughs> Who, strikes Back? Yeah, because he, like, you know, it was like him, Wonder Woman, and Superman were all together again, weren't they? I never read it. I mean, I read the Wikipedia, but... Well, maybe that's where it'll be by the end of this movie. You know, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman be standing there together about to fight... Kryptonian gloves. Yeah. Uh, Kryptonite gloves. About to find, uh, fight uh, the Joker, who was young Robin or whatever. <laughs> and he's just like, <laughs> boosh! <laughs> But uh, but, yeah. but yeah, then there's also the thing of when um, in this Batman v Superman trailer again, um, Batman's asking Ralph Alfred Ralfred Alfred Ralph twenty years in Gotham and how many good guys are left? How many stayed that way? Mm -hmm. So it's also saying well, that I mean you know, it does show that maybe there have been some allies of Batman who have not stayed good, like Jason Todd, who's been driven crazy and become. Uh, the Joker. Now, some people, I think some people have tried to knock that down with, like, Harley Quinn. Like, why would Harley Quinn be with, what you call it then? Well, maybe Harley Quinn never was with the original Joker. Maybe yeah, she's, she's always, always been, been with Jason with Todd. So, I mean, I mean, personally, I don't like the idea, but if you're showing me this guy is Joker, I'd rather him be Jason <laughs> Todd than uh, the, the Joker, because I don't feel like... Really captures the Joker, but I feel like it makes sense 
if he's Jason Todd. It, I guess it'd be interesting. I mean, they've changed enough in this franchise that I don't feel really connected to it as like a comic book fan. So I'm like, you know what? Go ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that's the thing, though, is that I think this movie... You got Superman snapping necks. You got Batman as Ben Affleck. Joker being Jason Todd. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Go with it. Yeah, take I mean, that's the it. point. That's the thing, though, is that these movies are very much like... I. You know, you have to look at them and be like, okay, well... This Aquaman isn't this is isn't Drogo. This isn't the ba- this isn't the DC cinematic universe that I want. It's not close to Marvel. It's more like the old it's a more like, you know, Tim Burton's Batman Well, it's up more like somebody's Superman. Postmodern take on the DC cinematic universe. Well, no, it's just somebody it's Zack Snyder, David Ayer's take on the DC universe. I That's mean, what I just said. It's no, but you're saying it's the postmodern. I mean, it's just their visual takes on it. I mean, David Ayer's it's looks, a looks different than like what Zack Snyder's doing. But it's still postmodern. I mean, it's still them. Well, everything's looking. postmodern. Jeez, I mean, it's them looking. Marvel's the a postmodern take on the comic book universe too. Not I mean, really. Black Widow's a whole lot cooler in the movies than she is in the comic books. Postmodern doesn't mean. Just Hawkeye's that it's a lot different. lamer in the movies than he is in the comic books. <laughs> Thor doesn't have his cool uh, metal helmet. Yeah, he does. No, he doesn't. He's he he wore it like for two seconds. Yeah. You said that he didn't have it. <laughs> yeah, he He's doesn't have it. it He's somewhere. like, I lost it. No, they've never confirmed that. He's probably like, it's in my room somewhere. <laughs> oh, well, it's underneath all my junk and shit. Yeah, I've got it mounted on the wall because, you know, I don't want to wear it because I mean, it might get hurt or something. But anyways, I mean, Thor's <laughs> origin is completely different in the comics than it is in the movie. So, I think, you know, like I said, this is somebody else's take on it. It's, it's vastly different, mm-hmm. you know, of course. But I think, like I said, I can, I can look past that. I know a lot of people can't. But I'm looking past it because it's like I said, in this movie, we are going to get the best Batman we've ever seen on film. I think we are. We are definitely. I think not without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, after that trailer, without a shadow of a doubt, we are going to get the best Batman we've seen. Granted, he's getting being played by Ben Affleck. I could never say that. But it's like I said. Playing Batman, it's not like you need to be an amazingly great actor. And, I mean, Ben Affleck's a good actor. He's not a great actor like a Christian Bale or nothing. But he's a good actor. And I think playing Batman, you just got to be, like, brooding and stuff. And, like, you got to have, like, a good mad face. Which, I mean, in the trailer, Ben Affleck does to a T. So, I mean, I don't think it matters. He's got a great chin. So he's going to look good in the mask and in the suit. And I think the suit will will be more of a thing. Like I said, the suit's gray. I mean, they've the never done cool. a gray suit. I mean, I, even though the fat bat is, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of the fat bat. I mean, it looks fine to me. I mean, it does, it's not like it's like, ugh, I get I a can say on the it. suit will probably be the best. But you haven't seen the movie. How do you know the characters might be the best? For all you know, they might make Batman a child molester. I mean, I guess, yeah, they could make him a child molester. He likes diddling kids or whatever. But I think for them... <laughs> Which has been implied in the comics sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like I said, I have hope. I, I mean, I think it will be. Because like I said, Zack Snyder's a way bigger fan of Batman than he is of Superman. I mean, he, you mm-hmm. know, and I think that, like I said, this will be the best interpretation. It might not be the perfect interpretation, but it will be the best that we've seen. I don't think it will be perfect, like I said, but it will be the best. And Getting I think, a little bit in the comic books here, I, I agree with you that Zack Snyder likes Batman. However, I don't feel like this will be the best interpretation of Batman ever. It will be the best interpretation of the Dark Knight Batman ever, which is, I feel, is a different character than Batman. Yeah, but like I said, I mean, com- compare compare that Batman, that. compare that Batman to Christian Bale, uh, to Michael Keaton, George Clooney, There's Val Adam Kilmer, West. Adam West. I mean, I mean, which Batman's better? Which Batman would you prefer? Which Batman would I prefer? I mean, out of you, all of if the, they were like out of if they were like out, out of all of the, the movie, movie Batman, all of all of movie Batman's, including Adam West and um, Dark Knight Returns Batman, mm-hmm. but we're not going to do like Scott Snyder or Grant Morrison Batman. We're going to do Frank Miller's Batman, who's a little more harder and rougher, but is still cool. I think I think he's still cool. Like I said, he's not the perfect Batman, but he is a cool, futuristic, different world Batman. Out of all of the movie Batmans. 
Which one could be better? Kevin Conroy. Well, yeah, but we didn't include Kevin <laughs> Conroy. And plus, he's animated. He doesn't count. Like I said, I think it is... I mean, I, I guess if we're counting Kevin Conroy, then yeah, Kevin Conroy is the best, and he will always be the best Batman. <laughs> but I think live action, this will be the best live action Batman. And I said film, too, because this movie's going to be shot on film. <laughs> All right, I'm just saying, it's possible there might not be. And, uh, yeah, none of the movies, none of the movies have done, have, all of the movies have based it off of Frank Miller's Dark Knight, except for the Adam Mast ones. So, you know, it's just, it's just, it really rubs me the wrong way, that it's like, yeah, we're getting a Batman, and we're so close, but it's going to be the Dark Knight Returns again. And it's like, how many times have we seen it? I mean, to... Dark Knight Rises was an adaptation of The Dark Knight Returns, and it blew, you know. I mean, all of the Batmans have had elements of The Dark Knight Returns, so why do we need to see it again? So that really just, that really grinds my gears, and it makes me really What other ones have had Dark Knight Returns? All of them have. Where? The Keaton ones. Where was Dark Knight Returns in that? That movie was terrible. (laughs) In the Keaton ones? Yeah. Well, I, I actually, I, 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 I actually personally don't like the Tim Burton, Michael Keaton Batman movie. I don't like that one. But I don't see how that was Dark Knight Returns. It's got a lot of inspiration. For I mean, me. it's dark. I mean, before the dark, before. The I mean, 19, I don't even think it's not even nineteen eighty nine Batman's. All we had was like the Adam West Batman and the Dark Knight Returns. So, I mean, which one is that closer to? It's it's more like Adam West, except mm. darker. No, it's more, they, it's Tim they Burton. Took the darkness. It's Tim Burton more so than it is anything else because it's dark. It's like Edward Scissorhands. That's what it's like. It's not even like Dark Knight. It's, it's like darker than it's Edward like Edward Scissorhands. Scissorhands or those weird claymation movies Tim Burton did. Have you ever seen Edward Scissorhands? Yes, it looks just like Batman. No, Edward Scissorhands <laughs> yes. is fairly bright. Yeah, okay, yeah, those are seeds where it's like weird Technicolor it, stuff, but yeah, when he's like in Edward Scissorhands' it. house and stuff, and it's real dark in the clothes he's wearing, it's a gothic, it's not necessarily Dark Knight Returns. I mean, it's like I said, it's dark, but that's Tim Burton. I mean, Tim Burton looks at this character, he probably looked at Dark Knight Returns, and probably was like, oh, this character is really dark and stuff, and mm-hmm. I can work with that, because yeah. I like gothic cores like stuff, too. Yeah. He created he this really world, of. really weird world with it, but it's like I said, it doesn't seem, it seems very original. It doesn't seem like it's a take. Because, I mean, he's got Batman throwing people down buildings and stuff, and throwing bombs in people's pants. I mean, that's stuff Batman no, it's doesn't not, do. it's not a take I mean, in the Knight Joker. Returns, I mean, the Joker is somebody different. But it's more inspired different. from the Dark Knight Returns than anything else. Yes, it is mostly a Tim Burton-like movie, but it's just like we've kept... It's each movie, we've kept getting closer to a true interpretation of the Dark Knight Returns, which, yeah, we're we're hitting it right on. We're hitting the target right on, but I feel like it's on the wrong tree. It's on the Dark Knight Returns tree and not the Batman tree. I don't see it, but I don't see any of the movies being like the Dark Knight Returns. You say every single movie's been like the Dark Knight Returns. The Schumacher ones are like uh, Adam West movies. They're just dark. I mean, they're they're the mixture between Tim Burton and Adam West. The Batman movies, you know, Tim Burton was, you know, took the darkness from the Dark Knight Returns, mixed it with his own style you know, made this movie, and then the subsequent movies were based off of that first movie. So they all had that same sort of I don't inspiration think so. from The Dark Knight Returns. I don't think, I don't think Tim Burton looked at and Dark then, Knight Returns as well, inspiration. I mean, like, look at even the Nolan movies. It's got the, I mean, the first one has the inspiration from Year, Year one. one. But that's not Dark Knight. Second Knight. Second one was called... The Dark Knight. Yes, but it was based on The Killing Joke, which yes. wasn't even written by Frank Miller. But it was inspired by The Dark Knight. Yeah, but it's because of the whole That's thing why that... That's they I'm it sure The that, Dark Knight. No, and it's, the the, third it's one the whole thing was of that... The Dark Knight Rises, which was a actual adaptation of parts of The Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, it's a, uh, that, that one I will give you, but I don't think any of the other ones I are. think the other ones were inspired by it. That third one was an adaptation of I don't think so. I think, yeah, because his name's the Dark Knight, but that doesn't mean anything. I mean, that's like saying Man of Steel is like that one that's Brian Azzarello story. from the story, from the 
tone of the Dark Knight Returns. Well, yeah, because the comics have that tone. You read Scott Snyder's Batman, and it's got that same Dark Knight tone to it, too. It's yeah. dark and, like, depressing at times, and, like, there's murders and gangs and stuff, just like it is now. So, I mean, you read Grant Morrison's, who's your favorite Batman, and it's got that same tone, too. It's dark and scary and stuff. He's got weird pig man cutting people up. I mean, it's, like I said, it's all that dark, scary stuff, because Frank Miller came in and changed Batman. Yeah. Yes, for a they more, do. For a postmodern world, like you said. Even, favorite word. Even the Kevin Conroy Batman. Yeah, it's dark. Has and some sad. of that in it. But all of those, all three of those, are also inspired by all the other Batman type stories that there are out there. Yeah, and this, this the, the movies, Tim Burton's are The different movies too. are not. They're Tim inspired. Burton's has that dark. It's a mixture of The Dark Knight Returns and Tim Burton's own style. It's not anything to do with any of Batman. As Whatever. Is the I digress, movie. Jackson. We need to move on because there's more. This than podcast can. is over. This podcast is over. All right. Now I lost my place because I don't know what else I was going to say. Well, you shouldn't have been arguing. So no, much. you had to argue about stuff. Two. You could have just let me say my piece. All right. Uh, next news, Jackson. Okay. Now this podcast is very awkward. <laughs> <laughs> What's next news? Uh, Fantastic Four script. Um, <coughs> we all know Fantastic Four turned out terribly, right? Yeah. Um, previous to it being terrible, it sounded not too bad. It still sounded weird, but it sounded not too bad. Mm -hmm. um, originally, um, right after Josh Trank did Chronicle, he was then hired to do um, Fantastic Four. And he had originally wrote a script with his writing partner, Jeremy Slatter. Slater? Slater? Slatterly? He wrote a script with his buddy Jeremy Slater, who uh, also co-wrote, whatchamacallit, um, co-wrote. Co-wrote. Chronicle. Chronicle? Wait. Yeah, he co-wrote Chronicles Chronicle. of Narnia? Wait. Whatever. He helped. He, he wrote was, something. <laughs> he wrote something with <laughs> Josh well, let's Trank. Let's just say it was a really great movie, like... Something. The Perfect Storm. Wait, actually... He, he co-wrote The Perfect Storm. Let's go on. No, he didn't. But uh, he, um, him and him were, you know, hired to write, whatchamacallit, uh, Fantastic Four. And in their script, they had originally intended for a bunch of original characters to be in it. Um, Galactus, Mole Man, and Herbie in the Fantastica. Really? And it was also to include Doctor Doom becoming um, a herald of Galactus. And... Galactus was going to be in his true form, which not not like the big cloud monster from the Rise of the Silver Surfer, but in a, a real giant person. Okay. Well, that, you know, that actually, that sounds cool. I mean, no cloud Galactus, you know, you throw the Mole Man in there, Herbie, whatnot. Uh, Doom being the Herald of Galactus, that, I don't think that's ever happened in a comic, but that sounds freaking uh, sinister. Did you read all this, the whole breakdown of the thing? No, no, I just read the, like, that stuff. Well, I'm going to read it. Okay. So. Well, well you read it, I'm going <laughs> to kind of muse on what I feel about uh, Doctor Doom being the Herald of Galactus. Um, I feel like that sounds uh, freaking sinister, though. I mean, even, like, I haven't seen this Fantastic Four movie, but from what I've heard... Spoilers, <coughs> excuse me, for this Fantastic Four movie if you are wanting to go see it. But uh, from what I've heard, it's sort of like, you know, Doom, you know, they go to the negative zone on the planet zero or whatever. You know, Doom gets left behind, the rest of them go back. And then one year later, Doom comes out, he's like, I live on planet zero now, my suit is fused to my body, so that's why I look like a garbage can, and I'm blowing shit Check. with my mind and stuff. So, I feel like, I mean, that would have made it, like, almost bearable, had he been, like, left on this uh, negative zone, weird planet zero for the whole year. Yeah, because isn't and it supposed to be like a planet on the other side of the universe or something like that? I think that's what they describe it as in the movie. So I, I mean, it's the negative zone, which is a different reality, but it seemed like it was on a different planet on the other side of the universe. Whatever. Trans-dimensional travel. Whatever. But, um, different planet. Galactus could be there. But yeah, yeah. So while this year on this planet here, he was picked up by Galactus, and now he's coming back through the portal as a herald of Galactus. 
and you know they fight him and you know he explains what was going on what happened in that year i mean i feel like that would be pretty pretty awesome i mean he, i mean i'm going into writer mode here but i would even make it to where like time is faster there or something to where like you know it you know one year in like the human time was like 300 years over there so he's like been Galactus's herald for like a long time or whatever. I don't mm -hmm. know. That just sounds that sounds way cooler than what actually happened. Yeah, I mean, but it seemed like there was still a lot of stuff that was cut out that probably would have even made it a little bit more bearable. <coughs> like I think there's supposed to be a scene between Doom and Reed where they're talking. You know mm -hmm. that scene where he's like sitting on a table. Like that's not in the movie. And then like all the thing fighting stuff isn't in the movie. Oh, and yeah. there's more action stuff that's not in the movie that's in the trailer. So, but, uh, the Fantastic Four, this is just a kind of, um, I mean, I guess it's not official, but it's kind of like what, this is what Jeremy Slater and Josh Trank had written together, um, before Simon Kingberg, who wrote, um, Days of Future Past came in and rewrote it. Okay. Um, so it says here, it's described, um, as in, as in the final film, Reed goes to the Baxter building as part of a science scholarship. There he meets Sue and Victor Von Doom. Victor takes the needy Reed to parties where he meets and falls for Sue. But Victor's not, Victor's not actually picking up girls at these shindigs. He is secretly feeding Reed's research to spies from his homeland of Latveria. In the script, the quantum gate is very much that, a ripid space through which, is a, mo which a module is passed on a big hydraulic arm. What they find is not the empty, broken landscape of the film, but rather an alien city. The city is full of skeletons, non-human things that have been killed in some cataclysm. As the, as the team explores the ruins, the, they, come up, they come upon an amphitheater? Amphitheater. Amphitheater full of corpses and something else, something huge, and something wearing battle armor with two blades coming out of either side of its helmet. The huge thing, Galactus, for those not in the know, Chases the three explorers. He shoots dark matter out of his hands, enveloping and seemingly killing Victor. Reed and Ben make it to the module, but it's not working on the other side of the por on the other side of the portal. Sue is working feverishly to fix the si si circuitry circuitry that won't allow the module to return home. Galactus near says Sue finally fixes the machine and blasts the module. Blast the module with dark matter, but the dark matter hits the quantum gate, and there's a reaction in the entire team. The two in the module and the two in the lab are pelted with some kind of cosmic madness. The script jumps ahead four years instead of one. Jumps four years. Johnny Storm is a reality show star, although his show is dipping in the ratings. Sue is still at the Baxter building, and she's using her invisibility powers to look inside her patients suffering from serious cancers. Dr. Elder, a uh, mole man, um, wants her to come work on the Maloid program, but Sue won't. She thinks it's it'll be weaponized. As all of this as all of this is happening, we cut to Latveria. Using the information Victor fed them, the Latvarian government has created their own quantum gate. They send a team through the module, return splattered in blood, containing only one occupant, a Victor Von Doom, now entirely made of dark matter. He quickly dispatches everyone around him using shape-changing abilities and shooting electrified razor wire from his hands. Within minutes, he has slaughtered Latveria's ruling elite and taken over the country. At the same time, thugs called shock troopers in the script assault the Baxter building. In the chaos that ensues, Dr. Elder gets Malloy juice on him and transformed into Mole Man, while shock troopers inject a Malloy with dark matter. Maloids are those like things, yeah, like his moid. monsters. Yeah, mole, mole, mole monsters. Oids. Mole Moloids, Moloids, whatever. Yeah, Moloids. Mole men. <laughs> the mole man's mole men. Sue and Johnny stop the shock troopers, but when Reed shows up, too late to warn them. Sue and just Sue and Johnny. I can't read. Sue and Johnny <laughs> stop the shock troopers when Reed shows up, too late to warn them, but not too late to see the injected Moloid, now giant, burst out of the ground. Similar to the first issue of Fantastic Four. Um, ben, who happens to be nearby looking at puppies in a pet shop window, hears the commotion and runs over. The team engage the giant moloid as seen on the cover of the Fantastic Four number one in a fight that is both exciting and humorous. 
the rest of the script as has the team coming together to go to Latveria, now the center of an international incident, because Victor has built a giant dark energy cannon. He intends to use it to destroy Galactus. It seems that Victor's only chance at survival in the negative zone was to act as Galactus's herald and help him find a new world to eat, Earth. But Von Doom intends to destroy the destroyer before that can happen. The final battle is in Latveria, but it is revealed that the shape-shifting Doom there is just some kind of Doom bot. Doombots, Jackson. Doombots? Doombots! Doombots! Victor is actually physically attached to the planet in the negative zone and has sent tendrils of his Earth being to Earth. Mm, and has sent tendrils like of his being to Earth. I don't understand. The film ends with him trapped in the negative zone, the fan four telling the government Galactus is coming in the retooling of the Baxter building as their home base and a school for smart kids who can help, the de help defeat the coming menace of Galactus. It's not perfect, but I'd rather see that movie. That movie sounds freaking wicked. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of elements in there that sound interesting, and I'm sure, you know, probably if they, you know, if they... Because, I mean, Galactus is in it, but he's not the main bad guy. Doctor Doom is. Mm -hmm. And probably if they cut out the moment, I mean, but they had that big fight. I think, I think where they're going wrong here in this script is they need to cut out Dr. Doom as the main villain. I think you should see Dr. Doom come through there, you know, maybe he meets with them and, like, lets them know about Galactus. Maybe he even succeeds in escaping, like, he escapes back to Earth. Out, yeah, back to Earth, and he's like, I'm free from Galactus, I spent time as his herald, and he's going to be coming for us at some point. And he then he takes over Latveria, you know, he, the end of his story in this movie is he takes care of Latveria, the Fantastic Four, are fighting Mole Men, and you save Doom as a villain for, like, later on. Yeah. And or even you could even... Mole Man is the villain in this movie. Yeah, you might even be able to say that Doom might even help him, or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. I think... I would, yeah, I'd make Doom maybe the villain in the second movie, and then finally have Galactus, Galactus come in, in the, the third, third movie, movie and, and like, have Doom help them. Yeah, and maybe, like, a post credit scene... And the second Fantastic Four would have been like, you know, Galactus gets Silver Surfer or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but that, I mean, that sounds a little yeah. bit better. It sounds yeah. totally. more entertaining. Although, <laughs> I, don't, I don't like their description of Galactus having battle blades out of the side of his helmet. Never thought of those as being battle blades. I mean, because, they look like if he, like, stabbed you with them, they'd hurt. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean... When have you seen, like, that's, that would be the stupidest looking thing ever if he's like, Whoa! And, like, hit you with, like, the side of his helmet. Well, I think the thing is, is I think, I mean, this They're is... just accoutrements. This is probably just what it's described in the script. That, like, you know, whatever he wrote, that it's like, they're like battle blades sticking yeah. from the sides. I think they should be purely decorative. I mean, when you read a lot of people's scripts, like, you read, like, I think James Cameron's script for Spider-Man, it's really, like... Very, like, just weirdly described like that. It's not just like... And he's got these things sticking on the side of his head that look like, you know, L's or whatever. It's like, and he's got these sweet battle blades on the side of his head. Yeah. You know, it's it's, it's just weirdly cool. described because that's how they, you know, write things and want to be able to describe it to people. I just imagine, so, like, him being like, you know what, pushing a button on his forehead and two, like, straight blades kind of like... Tch -tch. <laughs> like Will Smith's shoe in Wild Wild West. <laughs> I mean, I'm, like I said, I think they were just supposed to describe it more as like big giant looking blade thing. <coughs> but, hey, we'll never see that movie. <laughs> Unfortunately not. We may never see another Fantastic Four movie. Yes, not at least not for seven years. Um, but yeah. But you digress. But I digress and sadden that. Some, <laughs> some form of a Fantastic Four, because like I said, this is more Fantastic Four. Than what we saw. Yeah. But it just still sounds really weird. It sounds too much. I mean, it sounds it like... It sound too much. It seems like the beginning... I think they did need a rewrite, <laughs> but they rewrote too much. Yeah, because that's what happened is this was before Simon Kinberg came in and really scaled it down to where it was, you know... This is just, how about they get I mean, powers? It like they cut out like half happens. of the... Half of his movie. No wonder Josh Trank was mad. It's like, jeez, dude, you got out like half of my movie. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, you know what? How about uh, they get powers and then like nothing else? But on Fat Man on Batman with Josh Trank, he did say that Jeremy Slatter was a big fan of Fantastic Four. And that he lived to do a Fantastic Four movie. And I mean, this does sound like a big like fans. 
interpretation of a Fantastic Four movie. Because he's yeah. just like, let me throw in Mole Man and Doctor Doom and Galactus, you know. Mm -hmm. and but, you know, I, I, mean, I think it's charming in its own way that I think, you know, I, I mean, to me, you know, you don't even really even have to see Galactus. I think he can just be something that we know is coming. Yeah, I mean, like you said, where he gets left behind, similar to how it is in the movie, I think. Yeah. And then he's just like, Galactus gave me these powers or whatever. Or yeah. I I've, mean, got the, I've got more powers or whatever. whatever. Yeah. I mean, you could even just show just like the Silver Surfer. Like, if you had like this like cool scene where like Doom is trapped on that negative world planet and he turns around and like... You know, it's like or, that, it's or, like that scene in the first Avengers where Loki is on that rock or whatever, and he turns around and Silver Surfer is there, and he explains like who Galactus is. And you mean Doctor Doom? No, no, Silver Surfer is talking to Doctor Doom. You said Loki. Sorry, I mean no, no. I, you said Avengers. Yeah, but I said it's like that scene in the, the first Avengers with Loki, oh. where he's on that rock and he's talking to Thanos. Well, what are you talking about, man? I'm trying to describe. <laughs> you said it's like Avengers, that scene with Loki where he's talking on top of a rock. What scene is that? Is he talking to Thanos? Is he talking to Thor? No. Is he talking when to he's the talking Avengers? talking to the other. Yeah, the uh, Thanos' dude. Yeah, when he's talking to Thanos' But he's dude, just like, you better do what he like, say. Yeah, or... where he's like, you know, you better do what he say. Would he be the one who put the staff in your hand and stuff? You know, if you had, like, a cool scene like that or something. Oh, where Dr. Doom's talking to Silver Surfer. Yeah, Silver or, Surfer's or like, when Silver Surfer's like, you know, you know, hey, we want you to do this for us. Well, what would be yeah. interesting is that, you're like... Gonna be, you're going to come in on number two <coughs> Herald or whatever. Well, that would be cool as, I mean, if they did it kind of similar to the movie where um, Doom's gone, and he's been gone for, like, four years, and then he comes back, but he looks normal. Mm -hmm. Like, he looks normal, but everybody else is like a rock, turns on fire, turns invisible, stretches, and they're like, why do you look normal? And he's like, I've got these powers. And he's just got powers now, but he looks normal and mm -hmm. stuff. And he's like, I've got these powers from, you know, Galactus, and he healed me. You know, I was a metal trash bag looking monster, but now I'm, you know, he healed me and turned me into, like, my normal self. Yeah. And then he just, like, builds, like, a cool suit of armor to harness his powers and to protect him from fighting people. Yeah, personally, that I like I, I like personally I like the comic book Doom where he's a self-made man. But if you're going to do it, I mean, clearly they want Doom to have superpowers. So if they're going to make Doom have superpowers, then this is the coolest. Well, problem is they won't choose what superpowers he has. He's always got like weird powers, like electric powers, and then like in this head one, exploding powers. and he's got head exploding powers and like telekinesis or whatever, but then like he won't use them. He'll well, like that's because... go hand to hand combat with them <laughs> instead or whatever. I mean, that's the thing. Doom does not have powers in the comic book, so they yeah, but just feel like they can give him whatever powers But he usually they has like a suit where it's like, I'm harnessing magic and I can do this. Like I said, it probably would have been better if he had these powers, but he just couldn't really use them. Kind of similar to how the movie was, where he's got, and, that's, and that is his containment suit. He builds this, uh, you know, the Doom suit, and that's yeah. his containment suit. Yeah, if you're, if you're going to make it to where he has powers, that sounds the coolest. But it's just kind of like blasts and stuff, or yeah. like, you know, dark matter blasts. Or dark whatever. matter blasts. It's blast. not necessarily like head exploding. Yeah. Yeah, you keep it something simple. You know, they didn't make him that powerful to be the Herald. You know. But it's like I said, I I would rather see Doom to where he's a self made hero, but if you're gonna give him powers, I think that's the coolest origin for him. That's what they should have done. That should be a segment we should do. You know what they should have well, done. What they should have done. <laughs> that they should see what they should have done was they should have cut out all that crappy stuff and just made a good movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, had it just been good. I think people would have liked it, but they didn't but make it But they made good. it bad, so nobody liked it, so yeah. that's their problem. Ba, 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 ba. But I digress. On to the next news, Jackson. On to the next news, on to the next news, on There's to a the couple next. things. I mean, like I said, the rest of them aren't great, and there's a few things we could talk about. I do want to mention, though, that um, Let's do we... a speed round of news. Somebody passed away today, I think, actually. Oh, really? Or earlier today. Yvonne Craig Jan Jackson passed away. Is TV's it, bad girl. Is it? Y Yvonne, Yvonne, whatever. Yvonne, Yvonne. I think it's Yvonne. Yvonne. Yvonne Craig. Yeah, Yvonne Craig passed away today. 78. Bad girl from the 1966 Batman. Adam West Batman. She uh, passed away after a battle with cancer, so. Oh, man. That's a... Bucket of wind. 
I'm going to steal that from <laughs> Kevin Smith. Did you say big bucket of wind? Yeah, that's a big bucket of wind. He didn't. He never says big bucket of wind. A, yeah, he does. That's a big no. bucket of wind. It's a big bucket of win. wind. Not wind. What's wind then? Wind is like, uh, like win. Like I don't when understand. How is that a big bucket of win if you die? You lost. <laughs> 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 Clearly, you don't understand. You're Whatever. Saying, Big bucket of saying, win, D or no D. <laughs> no, it's it's saying that her life was a big bucket of win. That you know, yeah, she died, but you know, her whole life she had. A big I don't, I'm, not, of I'm not sure with sayings. I mean, you know, whatever sayings can mean, I mean anything. No, I mean that makes sense. It does make big sense now that wind. you're saying it. But it's like I said, big bucket of wind. I was like, ooh, that's just some old saying that some people say. That's sad for when people die. But yes, she passed away. That's sad. Never really. I never was able to really watch her episodes of Batman. Like no, I've, I've seen never, like never seen one. I've seen like a bunch of other episodes. Actually, I've only really seen like one episode. And that was like on IFC when they had like a big marathon. But sad to hear she's a big bucket of win, Jackson. Win. Yep, big old bucket of win. Okay, so there's a couple more things we can talk about. I mean, let's do a speed round. How about you speed them out, and I'll give like one noise. Uh, expressing the, my emotion on it. The Flash uh, first season two footage. Did you see that? Hmm. Did you see that? Yeah. I saw it. <laughs> I okay. thought we were going to go with my idea, but apparently. Oh, I didn't know that you were going to be like, hmm. I thought you might have been, well, because it's a trailer. I mean, you, you have okay, to give yeah. your thoughts on Yeah, that. I did see the trailer. It was really short, though. It was really short. Flash signal. Flash light, if you will. Uh, next uh, next news. Uh, Michael Shannon, is, is, we talked about him coming back for Batman v Superman, said he's going to have probably like a flipper. Or something, or he described it as a flipper because he said he couldn't open doors with it. Yeah, I saw this. He's got like flipper hands, which is weird. Uh, I feel like so maybe Lex Luthor's experimenting on him, making him more fish than man. I doubt it. I maybe, think it's maybe just that's the a... thing. He'll he will experiment. He'll bring him back to life using fish DNA. He'll come back as this monstrous. Half fish, half man, Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman are fighting him. They can't do anything. He's just kicking their butts, just slapping around <laughs> with the flippers. And then at the very end, you hear, boop, 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 You look to the top of the building, there's Aquaman, and he uses his powers to... Uh, control him. Yeah, to control him, make him go back into the sea. And he's like, he won't mess with you again. <laughs> it's like, like the end. <laughs> <laughs> he flies away. So, uh, so yeah, there's my theory on how Batman vs. Superman will end. <laughs> and he's like, you won't, he won't mess with you anymore. Yeah, and they're like, and then he's like Man, you're so useful. <laughs> and then he's like, I know. And then he just flies right into the, fly <laughs> the ocean. But yes, we don't know. Whatever. Sounds weird. Um, I, I mean, I think that's just one of those things where it's like, that doesn't sound like good news at all. <laughs> Like, I can't think of a way where that's cool. I can't think of anything where that would be cool. I mean, if they're making, like, if Zod's going to be back in it, like, even if they, like, CGI his hands into something, it's like, what could they CGI his hands into that would be cool? Like, tentacles? That wouldn't be cool. I don't know. I mean, it's like I said, I think it might be some type of science experimentation with his body that probably, like, have maybe dismorphed it or melted it and just kind of, like, his hands might just be, like, flipper-looking, but they're probably they're just like, melted. Unless he's just on this table and, like, you know, maybe his hands are just gone because they've, like, cut them off or something. Well, I don't know. It, it sounds like he might... And just it sounds like they'll probably take down. his body into, like, Doomsday, and like I said, it might be experiment, science experimentation, and eventually it just leads to, like you said, maybe his hands are like chopped off or melted away or CGI'd into something. Yeah, CGI just like all we'll just to like see. bloody stumps, like on two arms and like a leg or something, and they're just like we've just cut off pieces of his body to experiment on. 
So, yeah, that's the only thing that I could think of that would be all right. But, like, any kind of flippers or tentacles or anything. <laughs> well, I doubt, like, I doubt, like I said, I doubt he's going to have flippers. Uh, he said flippers. He so. said flippers, but like I said, when you watch a lot of Michael Shannon stuff, he seems crazy, so. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's not even in the movie. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, I'm not even in the movie. <laughs> yeah, maybe they're like, we didn't put those flippers on you. You showed yeah. up with them already. Yes, why are you here, Michael? You died in the first one. Yeah, like, we already shot your scene. <laughs> He's like, I can't open the door, guys. Let me in. <laughs> You're not supposed to be in here. Go away. Go away. So that does it for news, Jackson. Okay. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? Well, no. Nothing after the whole... Uh... I thought you were looking up some more stuff. No, no. No. Not at all. I was looking... You told me... Uh, before we started, that there were naked pictures of Gal Gadot, so I was looking for those, but I have not found them, so I've got nothing to they're, report. They're, they weren't naked, like I said, there she did like a promo for like Gucci or something like that, and they were like, "Look, she poses nude," and then you look at it, and it's just like her back. She's uh, like topless, but you know you can't see anything. Okay, it's just her back. But so, what is the next <laughs> chamber? Of our uh, thing after the news. Uh, you know, spotlight, Jackson. I mean, <laughs> geez, we've been doing it for the past, like, four weeks. You should know how it goes. But we need to explain to the audience, which is why I ask every time, because, like Stan Lee said, every comic book is somebody's first comic book. So if somebody likes listening to this, they may be like, well, this is my first one. I don't know what the next chamber is. Somebody needs to explain it to me. Okay, spotlight. What's the spotlight for this week? Spotlight for this week, Jackson, is... Video games. Specifically, comic book video games. Really? Yes, really. Comic book video games. Yes, Jackson. And first off, um, I've got a list here. A um, list we both compiled. Um, and I'm just going to kind of go through them. Probably look at them, all of them and you know, ask you what you think of them. Ask you if you've played them. And then we'll go from there, okay? Okay. First off, Mua, Jackson. Mua. Mua. Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Yeah, I like that one. That um, was uh, one I, I definitely played uh, when I was a younger man. And uh, I was... It's just one as a nerd. I mean, it may not be... Like, if you're judging these by, like, video game, like... <laughs> things, yes. then yeah, yeah. But as a nerd, a character where you can play as, like... Like most characters in the Marvel Universe, it's pretty awesome. I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of obscure superheroes, so a game where I can put together a team of Beta Ray Bill, Ben Riley, War Machine, and like Ms. Marvel, I was like that was just is just awesome. And on the PSP version, you got uh, Captain Marvel, so I got to play as Janice Bell. Mm -hmm. which was even better. So I got to put together my dream team of all my favorite superheroes. So, yeah, I mean, easy, easy uh, thumbs up for that game because uh, I think it's pretty awesome. It was really great, and it had a um, a great interesting story, too, because it, um, it was a story that encompassed a lot of the you know Marvel characters, a lot of the Marvel villains. Um, the main villain of it all was Doctor Doom. You know, Doctor Doom is probably one of the best... Marvel villains out there, um, and you know I think what he was trying to do was just get a bunch of power. I think he um, what does he do? He kills some. He gets he kills he gets like the Odin. power of Odin. Yeah, he gets the power of Odin. He doesn't kill him, does he? I don't yeah, know. He just he, steals his power. He steals the power of Odin, and he's got all this power. And you know, as the you know as the characters and the story, you just go along trying to you know prevent him at every turn. He eventually gets the powers, and then at the end, you actually have to like go to other places in space and get more abilities to actually stop them. Okay. You actually get to collect the ultimate nullifier, which was always interesting. And the Imkran crystal. And the Imkran crystal from Galactus. Yeah, and also Wait, the muonic inducer. The muonic inducer. Yeah, that's what it was. It wasn't the what you call it. Ultimate nullifier. No, it was the muonic inducer. I've never heard of the muonic inducer. Well, that's what it was, Jason. It sounds pretty uh, pretty hefty. But if you guys have never played this, I would definitely suggest to at least like look up on YouTube the cutscenes from this, because the cutscenes were pretty badass. Even though it really had nothing to do with any of the characters you got to play with, they were just awesome, like, superhero, like, short scenes. Like, 
and, and spoilers, but like one of the scenes is Nightcrawler kicking ass. It's you know it's a cool scene, like the scene in the uh, second X Men movie where he's kicking ass. There's another scene where there's a uh, Asgard a guy who's just guarding the door for Asgard, and they just you know, I mean just in a like a few seconds of a scene they turn him into a total badass. He's yeah. just got really good cut scenes. I think they're top notch. I think they're worth uh, worth a shot at looking at. Mm-hmm. And there was also a sequel that isn't as great, but I still think is solid. It's Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2. It's kind of more based off of the um, uh, Civil War storyline where it pits the superheroes against superheroes. And I think that one's a pretty good one. Check out E2. It's not, I don't think you should rush, but it's a good playthrough. Um, next, next game, Jackson. Okay. Um, well, maybe more next set of games. There's a lot of there's a lot of Spider-Man games, <laughs> and I think we should probably at least just go through all of them, including the movie ones, the standalone Activision ones, and you know even some of the more recent ones. All right. Um, so we got to start at the first Activision Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Well, unless you want to start at the very first one on the Atari 2000. I haven't played that one, so let's not. <laughs> so well, okay. Well, what was the the first one? It was just called Spider-Man, wasn't it? Yep, just called Spider-Man. Yep. The first. Activision Spider-Man game. What was that for? PlayStation 1? Yeah, it's PlayStation, Game Boy Color, Nintendo 64, Dreamcast, and Windows. Mm. Yeah, I love that game. Yeah, that was like, the, like, the one of the first ones I remember playing. That I remember that's one of the first video games I ever played. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely I just remember it was such a, such a great experience. I love to follow that story. It had Spider-Man. It had just a slew of ultimate costumes and cheat codes and just things like that that uh, just kept the game really fun. It had this uh, awesome storyline. If you were a kid of the 90s like me, where you had to fight just symbiotes everywhere. You know, in the 90s we loved symbiotes, so this game we got to fight plenty of symbiotes and that was great. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and yeah, and I think... Uh, it just had this awesome uh, villain at the end where Dr. Octopus and Carnage were uh, conspiring together. And at the end, the Carnage symbiote went on to Doc Ock, and you had to fight this Carnage. Well, you didn't fight. You had to just run away because this thing was such a badass. But, yeah, like uh, this their, monster Ock. their like, layer was blowing up or whatever, and it was like as it was blowing up, you had to run away from this big giant... Dr. Octopus Carnage Monster. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, all these things probably would not hold up if I went to play it again. I'm speaking directly from the vein of nostalgia. But, uh, but yeah, I love this game. Also, it featured uh, Venom in it a lot as a villain and as one of your allies. And, you know, as a kid, I was like, man, he's hilarious. Mm -hmm. And it also had that... It had a very inventive way of making it to where you could swing through the city and not really have to, and when you fall, there's a reason why you fall and die. Because at the beginning of the game, like, I guess, Dr. Octopus and Carnage, for some reason that's a weird pairing, though. Um, Venom and, uh, <laughs> Dr. Octopus and Carnage uh, have created some type of weird gas that goes throughout the city, and it's like, you know, poisonous, I think? I'm pretty sure it's like poisonous or something, but it's some type of gas to where while well, you're swinging, and it makes sense because, you know, in a video game there's a draw distance, which means as you look far farther beyond like where you're at, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, it doesn't look as clear, it looks real foggy and stuff in a lot of, a lot of places, and usually in, in, in this game they give a reason for why the draw distance is real foggy, why when you look down it's real foggy, because it's just the city's full of like this smoke. So it's everything's really hard to see. So when you fall, you fall to your death because you can't see where anything is and you just die. Mm -hmm. So I think that was an inventive way for them to add that into the game and give you a reason for why. Oh, well, when you fall, you know, you're falling into the smoke that they released and you just died in there. And like I said, it explained for the draw distance. And like I said, you could swing around the city, which was pretty fun. Yeah. They also made a sequel to that, uh, Spider-Man 2 Inter Electro, which kind of is pretty much the same game, um, but it's a different story. I don't remember <laughs> liking it as much. It was only came, it only came out for the PlayStation 2. Yeah, I don't think that I don't think it had as good of a story. I, the characters, I mean, we've seen all of them except Electro, 
an electro, you know, eh, yeah. I wasn't into it as much. There was a what if mode at the end of the first one where you got to play through and um, Watu the Watcher was the was the narrator because originally it was Stanley and then if you play the what if mode it's way to the watcher. Watu, we too. Watu. Watu the Watcher, and it's voiced by Lawrence Fishburne. Oh, really? Yes. Really? The, so they hired Lawrence Fishburne, but yeah, made his voice like out of lockable <laughs> mode. Of lockable, hidden Easter egg mode. But the next Spider Man game, at least, these are kind of more the ones that I, we remember playing more so than like anybody else. There are games, like I said, like yeah. for the Atari and yeah. like Maximum Carnage and stuff, but. I don't really remember those, but um, the next one is Spider-Man the Movie, based off of 2002 Spider-Man. Mm. So it's a it's a movie it's a movie video game, but it's you know it's not it's not bad it's not I thought it was pretty good. Uh, yeah, I don't remember a whole lot from this video game except for if you finish the game, you can unlock a mode where you get to play some of it as uh, the Green Goblin, and I remember that being really cool because the Green Goblin. Of course, had like machine guns, could shoot missiles and fly around. So it just kind of, it was like you getting to play part of the game over and get on God mode and stuff. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, that one was fun because it, and it was also kind of like playing the game over again with a different story because it had a different, it had different lines and stuff because it started out like, it just started out like the game did. Mm -hmm. Except I don't think it had, it didn't show any of the cut scenes. It, what it did was it like started and you were like right you pretty much start exactly the game the way game does originally mm -hmm. except now you're Green Goblin but you're Harry, Harry you're Harry Osborn in the Green Goblin costume and you're like jeez my dad you know had this suit behind this wall and I wonder what it does and he's like in it and then like he's in the glider and he can fly around and fight people and stuff and it plays just like the first playthrough does except you're trying to figure out like your father and you know what the suit does and stuff and you know the green goblin that you fight has different lines too and i guess what it's supposed to be is like another guy who stole the green goblin suit too and you're fighting that guy yeah so yeah it's got a lot of it's got different lines and stuff so it's kind of like playing a different game over again um but what i remember mostly about it was fighting vulture and having to climb up all those stairs to fight the vulture <laughs> That's what I remember a lot from it. I remember walking upstairs. <laughs> and I also remember that um, in the Xbox version, you got to fight Craven, And in the, our PlayStation version, you didn't get to fight Craven. Boo, thumbs down. It's kind of upset by that. But, but yeah. Whatever. A nostalgia trip. Yeah, it was, yeah, I mean, it's like you said, it's a good nostalgia trip because you probably are like, oh, man, I remember this being so awesome. Now, probably to the best video game movie on this the list. Spider-Man. Yeah, the, well, Spider well, I don't know. We'll, I mean, we'll, we'll get to that. Right. Well, after we go through, we'll go to the, we'll get to that. But um Spider-Man 2, based off of the 2004 movie. Um yeah, this one, like I said, this one was better because I th it, for one it was open world. It was one of the first superhero movies to be open world where you can just completely go through the whole city swinging through as Spider-Man and um you know, it used a lot of the same plot and everything. Just like the first one, I guess. So, I mean, but like I said, it was open world, and I think that's one of the first times that the superhero move, superhero video game, started to use that. But what do you remember about it the most? I mean, yeah, I remember being able to swing around. It had different like missions that you know you may be swinging around, and you see something's happening down there. You see that uh, you know there's some like robots that are shooting up the place or somebody's rubbing something and you can come down and beat them up real quick or you know sometimes there's some people standing on top of a building like about to commit suicide and you can go save them or talk them down from it or whatever and uh but yeah that was pretty cool and also i think one of my favorite moments i think maybe in any video game is uh, in this game here there's a part where you fight mysterio mysterio's not in the movie but he's in the movie video game and uh, you are at this, like, uh, shop, and you see Mysterio's robbing the place. And, you know, you see it's like a little cutscene. You know you, you're about to fight Mysterio. You're like, you see his health bar, and it just starts going up, filling up with all of this health and stuff. And you're like, oh, shit, i got to fight this guy. He's going to kick my ass. 
So you come in, you throw the first punch, and it knocks his health bar all the way down immediately. Falls over one punch, and he's done because he's got no powers. Yeah, he's and just he a can't guy. Can't fight super, Can't fight Spider Man. So yeah, it was pretty. I, I, I like that. It was a big surprising moment in the video game. I thought I was up for a big fight, and I wasn't. And uh, that was more memorable than any big fight. So uh, so yeah, I like that game. I was into it. You were. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, I was into it. I was really into it. Yeah, that was that was a good one. I remember a lot of the stuff with, um, you know, all of the Mysterio fights and having to swing to the Statue of Liberty mm -hmm. and get there to fight Mysterio. And, you know, a lot of the boss battles were cool. So I remember fighting on the train because that was my favorite part of the movie. And that was cool having getting to fight that. And, um, yeah, it was a good game. Good game, but nobody had tried to commit suicide. It was just people that like accidentally fell off of stuff. So, accidentally fell off. I don't even think anybody <laughs> fell. I just think it was like people were like hanging on the top of buildings. And they were like, "Oh, Spider Man, help me!" They had tried to commit suicide. Or like you at the last minute. Or like you'd like swing up to somebody and they're like, "Hey, that guy's hanging from a building. Stop him!" Or like they'd be like, "That guy stole my purse." They'd be like, "There's some dude shooting up the streets or whatever." You do that type of stuff. I mean, it was, but um, yeah, it was, it was a good game. Yeah, I like it. Next year, Ultimate Spider Man came out. I like that game a lot, too. It's uh, based off of the Ultimate Spider Man universe that was created by Brian Michael Bendis. Um, so it kind of follows that Ultimate Universe continuity. But um, what it does, though, in the game, you know, in the comics, there's the Venom suit and everything. And what it does is it kind of takes that Venom suit storyline that was in the Ultimate Comics and just kind of expands on that. Yeah, in the Ultimate Comics, you know, they had established, it was a sort of, I felt like a kind of a lackluster story where they introduced Venom and they kind of established that the Venom symbiote was built by Eddie Brock and Peter Parker's father as some sort of like cancer suit. And I felt like it was a little like, a little underwhelming. I didn't think it made much sense that this cancer suit, you know, this cancer symbiote or whatever, would turn into this monstrous venom symbiote. But uh, but in the video game, they actually kind of retconned the storyline to make it more believable to where it was being developed as a, you know, ultimate style weapon, you know, weapon type suit. So I felt like that made so much more sense. It kind of made that story better in hindsight. And the video game itself was just was very similar to Spider-Man 2. It had a lot of the same type mechanics, except it took place in this Ultimate Spider-Man world. And then it also had, a, I think once you beat the game, you could play as Venom, where you were just kind of in a Grand Theft Auto style, where you just kind of walked around, just murdering people until the police came, then you killed a bunch of policemen until S.H.I.E.L.D. came, and then S.H.I.E.L.D. would defeat you, and you just kind of see how many points you could get, how many cars you could destroy, and people you could kill yeah, and it was like as, shield killed you. Yeah, and it was like you were constantly dying, though, so you had to constantly, like, absorb people and, like, feed off of them and stuff, so that that way you wouldn't, because your health would slowly go away, and then once you eventually, like, absorb somebody, you know, you'd get more health or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I do remember that was a, a weird, weird thing to throw into a kid's video game. I thought it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. And again, it was an open world game. And it was done in the style of Mark Badgley's art. So that was cool. Yeah. Um, so but yeah, yeah they never really that. have explained the place in comic book continuity. Because when it first came out, they were like, oh, this takes place in continuity. But then they never really, like, a lot of the stuff that's in the game isn't really in the comic books and all of that. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of like, they kind of redid the story in... Um, they kind of redid the story in War of the Symbiotes, but they still changed a whole bunch of it. And okay. it, doesn't, it doesn't sound very good. But, yeah, there was also, I remember one of my favorite parts about it. I mean, I don't really remember it too much because I don't remember beating it too much. I remember that eventually you get to play as Venom, and Venom fights Carnage, and that Carnage is re revealed to be Peter Parker, who turned into Carnage. Mm -hmm. But I do remember playing as Venom, and one of the first missions is, like, you, like, you get to throw like a motorcycle into a bar, and then when you go into the bar, the motorcycle belonged to Wolverine, so then you had to fight Wolverine. Hmm. That was cool. 
Yeah, yeah. I don't remember a whole lot of it, but I remember it being fun. Yeah, it was fun. We still have it, because I'm like, someday I'll play it. Someday. Well, we don't have the system for it, mate. Um, Spider-Man 3. The video game? Yeah. I nah. Don't, I don't remember anything about it. Nope. I mean, I played I played it twice, technically, because I played it on the PlayStation 2 and on the PlayStation 3. The PlayStation 2 version was like a, you know, not great version. Oh, but really? PlayStation 3 version had better graphics and a different story. And you got to play as, whatchamacallit, uh, Harry Osborn's new goblin? Really? But, yeah, I mean... I feel like I never took a crack at even playing this game, then. I think because we were so disappointed by the movie... <laughs> Yeah, we were, yeah, just, we were like, just like, you know what? You were just like, eh. But I still played it because, you know, you got to swing around and do stuff. Really? Was it pretty much the same Spider-Man 2? Kind of, yeah. I mean, it was an open world. Really? Like I said, it just wasn't as good because it was like, ooh, Spider-Man 3 sucks. <laughs> okay. Well, I've, uh, I've always wanted to talk about doing playthroughs. I ought to try and get it sometime from, like, a uh, use place and do a playthrough. Mm. On to the next Maybe game not. that we play. <laughs> in between that, uh, but the next game, <coughs> next game we played, at least I played, I don't know about you, was um, Spider-Man Web of Shadows. Nah, and I never played that. You never played this? Yeah. This was a pretty good game. Um, Web of Shadows is, um, you know, another Activision game. It's a, it's pretty much like, um, it's pretty much like a war symbiotes type thing storyline <laughs> where um, a bunch of symbiotes invade New York City and eventually take it over and... Um, Infecting people, turning them into venoms, and turning them into Vincent's. carnages and everything like that. So, it's and um, what happens is Spider Man gets a gets infected with the symbiote suit again, but is able to kind of control it. A little well, at least you're able to control it. What um, but um, yeah, I thought it was a fun game because in the game you can control, you can turn back and forth into. From Spider Man regular suit to the symbiote suit, like whenever you want to. And when you're in the symbiote suit, you get like different powers, like you get to use the tendrils and you get to um, like throw cars and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the regular Spider Man suit, you can like, um, you know, you can kind of grapple people with your webs and swing them towards you or swing yourself towards them and fight them, which I thought was really cool because you fight like the vulture and he's got a bunch of like vulture bots or whatever and you get to fight a whole bunch of them and the vulture and you get to like, while you're flying through the air, you can like swing at them and then grapple yourself towards them and then like punch them in the air and stuff. And I always thought that was really cool. Um, now, wasn't, wasn't there like whole like different endings where like if you spend more of your time in some black suit you have a different ending or something well you you get you get a point into the game it kind of gives you like the choice based system where like at some point in the game like i think there's a point in the game where like black cat like falls and like hits like the floor or something like that and like you're there with mary jane and you can choose to like stay with mary jane or you can choose to go after black cat like healer or whatever and, like, you can do, like, that type of stuff, where it's, oh, like, man. you can choose to be regular Spider-Man or evil Spider-Man, and kind of, like, what happens is, if you are Spider-Man, if you're a good Spider-Man throughout the game, I think at the end you're just kind of, like, oh, yeah, everybody's good, me and Mary Jane are good and everything, so, yeah, that's awesome. And then, like, if you're bad Spider-Man, then, like, you... Mary Jane slaps you <laughs> the worst favorites. <laughs> no, like, you don't save, you don't... Stop the venom. I, th I think you don't stop the symbiote thing, and like you and Black Cat are like have both like symbiotes, and like the symbiotes are still fight inf invaded okay. New York or something like that. Or you control all the symbiotes or something like that. I don't know. Like it, I said, the gameplay was a lot better than the story. I remember <laughs> at that point I was like, I want to play this bullshit because it's not a movie game, but it doesn't have a Ben Riley costume. Which Ben Riley says it if does. You don't know is my favorite superhero. Oh wait, no, that was oh. is Xbox or something. Yeah, because um, it says that or, we a we exclusive. You get a Ben Riley yeah, cast, but because in this one you get you just get the two. <clears throat> you get the black and the regular stuff. Yeah. But like I said, I thought that was always cool. It had a bunch of characters in it too. It had like Moon Knight, Wolverine, um, Black Cat, mm -hmm. uh, Electro. And like I said, I thought the fighting, the fighting and the mechanics was better than the story, but it was still a fun romp, Jackson. Okay, maybe I ought to do a playthrough of that one. On to the next one, Jackson. All right. Shattered Dimensions. 
Ooh, yeah, I like Shattered Dimensions. Shattered Dimensions was the video game where it split the split Spider-Man into four different four different universes. The Amazing Spider-Man, which is like the regular comic book universe, mm -hmm. Noir 2099, and the Ultimate Universe. And so within this game, it has like a story where you go through and you go through each dimension trying to find a piece of a tablet that is shattered throughout the dimensions. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and it was cool with all the different art styles and all the different... Play, you know, styles. play styles of it all. I mean, all four different worlds had four different art styles, four different voice actors, four different play styles. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, uh, I think you know, the Amazing Spider-Man world, you know, was a bit more, it had that kind of cell shaded you know, kind of a bit more of a standard Spider-Man game. The Ultimate Spider-Man world had just, you know, tons of villains. You had the symbiote suit. You know, it was more just kind of a beat em up style with its ultra silly, super shaded style. The New War Spider Man tried to go for like a little bit of a Batman Predator style where you're doing stuff, you're staying in the shadows, and you're, you know, kind of, yeah, kind of like the Batman games. And the 2099 kind of had more of a realistic art style, the realistic board game mechanic as Spider Man. So, you know. I you know I know you're not a super big fan of this game. But no, I, I was a big fan of this game. It's the Edge of Time one. I'm not a big oh, fan. Oh, but well, you've never played the Edge of Time one. So. But anyways. But yes, Edge of Time. This game, I appreciate you know what they tried to do with this game, you know, and for me it had been Riley costume, so that made it a, a winner in my book, and uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I think I've played through that game twice. But yeah. um... Like we were saying, though, I think Shattered Dimensions. I think Shattered Dimensions is a really good game. I like that one a lot, and I've, you know, I like I've played through it multiple times. I, you know, it's just like I said. The next one that we're going to talk about, Edge of Time, Spider-Man: Edge of Time, which is kind of like a sister sequel to Shattered Dimensions. Yeah, tried to do shit. So I'm not a big fan of it. I mean, it was just kind of. It seemed like it was what Shattered Dimensions was, except stripped way down. It seemed like what edge. It seemed like Edge of Time should have came before Shattered Dimensions. It's just like I said. It was very stripped down and really like boring and annoying to me, you know. Because like like you said, Shattered Dimensions had different play styles, different voice actors, and this one had the same play styles, different voice actors. But it was it was just too much of the same thing to me. And I think at this point, I kind of got burnt out on it. Hmm. Well, I mean, personally. And I prefer, and I wanted, and I wanted another Spider-Man game where it took it back to the open world, and it just t did the same thing Shattered Dimensions did, which wasn't an open world, and I appreciate that because it was trying to do like a Arkham City, Arkham Asylum type thing. But mm -hmm. I just wanted, I wanted, I like the idea of swinging through the city as Spider-Man. But go on, worry. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, yes, Edge of Time was not a good game, and you know the critics are right, you're right. You know, it is kind of like Shattered Dimensions, except it's only just Amazing Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2099. Uh, but I actually, I, you know, I got it and I played through it and I, I actually enjoyed playing through it. I, you know, I wasn't burnt out on the play style, things like that. You know, I would have appreciated a bit more of an open world game. I mean, I felt like since you are limiting it down to just two different Spider-Mans, you know, it would have been cool if we could have had an open world with two different New York cities, with the future New York and then the present day New York. That would have been awesome. But, alas, they didn't do it, which is why it wasn't a good game. But, uh, you know, if you like Shattered Dimensions a lot, you know, I'd say go ahead and get it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was yeah, cool. I mean, if you can find it for like 10 bucks. And it had Riley costumes. <laughs> I could actually play... Because, you know, you kind of go back and forth, so I could play as the Scarlet Spider Ben Riley, playing with the 2099 Spider-Man Ben Riley, and uh, that was always fun. And I think that was another one where, like, at the very end of the actual game, like, the bad guy was, like, a third Peter Parker who was evil and older. Spoilers. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, if it's like ten bucks <clears throat> and you want to buy it with Shattered Dimensions, and yeah, it's a good sister yeah. sequel. It's like I said, it's a sister sequel, but I just didn't think that it really progressed. It actually degressed what Shattered Dimensions did, and that's why I, that's why I wasn't a big fan of it. But um, 
pretty much the next Spider-Man game is Amazing Spider-Man game based off of the movie. Know, you never yeah. really played it. I played it. Looked it looked like it had a lot of robots in it, and I was like, I'm it does. That's this journey. That's kind of the problem with it is that it has a lot of robots because you're fighting. It's pretty much what the what the guy from Mr. Roboto would have wanted a video game to look like. So it's just full of robots. I mean, because it's it's just that. I mean, it's just you're just fighting robots most of the time, and it's supposed to be like set after Amazing Spider-Man, so it's supposed to be like, you know, the lizard came out, and now there's a lot of, like, you know... Robots. Sp- yeah, it's like, you fight the lizard, then you fight robots. Oh, I didn't That's know the next that lizard step. gas turns everyone into a robot. <laughs> but it's supposed to be like, um, right after that, a bunch of other cross-species fighters that you're supposed to fight. I think you fight, like, Scorpion for a second, and then you fight, like, Rhino, I think. And then, like at the end, you fight Scorpion. You fight the lizard again. <laughs> you well, actually, you fight a, a giant. You fight a giant robot, and then you fight the lizard again in the sewers. But you spend a lot of your time either fighting robots or in the sewers. Yeah, so, or in of, Oscorp. So I'm not a big fan of games where you fight like robots the whole time, yeah. especially like little like spider-looking robots and stuff. That's just lame. But it was fun swinging. I mean, it was, it was, it was, I think that probably had one of the best swinging mechanics. It was just a terrible video Did you ever game. play Ultimate, uh, not Ultimate, Amazing Spider-Man 2? No. No? No, because they said it wasn't that good. Uh, oh, well, there you go. Because <laughs> I remember I went to GameStop, <coughs> excuse me, to buy Spider-Man Edge of Time, and the guy was like, Spider-Man Edge of Time, how dare you buy this? You should be buying the Amazing Spider-Man 2 game. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy what I wanted, came here to buy, man. And you didn't say like, that, but <laughs> you just were like, yeah, yeah. And you bought your stuff like, and yeah, left. but this is cheaper and stuff. And then he was like, the Amazing Spider-Man 2 game is going to be great, not horseshit like that game. And I was just like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, but I, he was just out. trying to make a sale because, like, like I said, the game came out and they're just like, it's not that great. The swinging mechanics are okay, and like the story is terrible, and the gameplay mechanics are terrible. So I wish I could go back so. to that guy and be like, ah, Amazing Spider-Man Two wasn't uh, that good. Uh, you said Amazing Spider-Man Two was supposed to be great. Yeah. Oh, 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 and oh, guess oh. what? <laughs> Yeah, Spider-Man Dead of Time wasn't that great, but I enjoyed the hell out of it. So fuck you. On to I the did next one. I enjoy the Amazing Spider-Man 2 movie. <laughs> <laughs> but you might enjoy the video game. Mm, On to the next think. one, Jackson. So yeah. is that the last of our Spider-Man video games? That was the last of the oh, Spider-Man video the, games. Okay. Well, at least the last of the Spider-Man. There's like more like Marvel ones, but that's the last Spider-Man one. Um, um, what's the next video game, sir? Injustice. Guys, <coughs> among us. Pretty much like Mortal Kombat meets DC. This is pretty much like the second best superhero video game. It's really like one of the only superhero video games that I'd say is probably like legitimately good. I mean, it's like a Mortal Kombat game. But it's with all the DC heroes. They all have like these awesome badass moves. We're like, I think... Doomsday punches you through the earth or something. Isn't there one where, like, Superman, like, throws you into the moon or something? Uh, like, Zod, like, like throws it? you through the moon and then throws you back to Earth. Yeah. What does Superman do? Superman, um, like... Breaks your neck. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember what Superman does. I think Superman, like... I, don't, I know he doesn't I throw you like through the laser moon. Vi- he, like, throws you in the air and laser visions you or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I don't know. So yeah, there's a lot of there's like, a lot of different moves. Really like, cool, badass moves. I think Green Lantern's got one where he hits you with like buses and stuff. Yeah, like hits you with like a bus and like uh, like planes. planes and all that stuff. And then the Flash runs like around the world and then punches oh, yeah. you. Yeah, Flash probably has the best one, but because like I said, I think Batman's was like he just like hits you and then like grabs you and then like sticks like a batarang on you. It explodes and then like he calls the Batmobile. And then jumps up and you get hit by the Batmobile. And it just, like... I mean, it's okay, but it's not, like... Flash runs around the world and you see him, like, running on water and stuff, like, in some foreign country. And then, like, mm-hmm. he runs and, then he and hits punch you in, you in the, the face. Stomach or something. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's pretty it's just a pretty awesome video game. If you like fighting games, if you like superheroes, I'd say get that game. Yeah, it's a good game and it's a, always a good game to have cuz you can always want to play it whenever you want. Who was so, your guy? My guy was either Flash or Superman. Flash or Superman. I know I liked being Green Arrow cuz you could just like yeah, like green just arrow was shoot like people the with arrows whenever player, you want. Because you could just hit people with arrows and they couldn't get near you. Uh, my guys were Nightwing because I love Nightwing, and my other guy though was uh, was Aquaman because he had yeah, he, had he had some had great cool, moves. He had a cool finisher. He had probably the coolest because he had this cool finisher. No matter where you were, which is weird. Yeah, you were on top of a building <laughs> in Metropolis, or but in he Gotham. could call upon like I, I don't remember what he did. He like. Throws his trident like down, like he hits the ground. Then all of a sudden, a tidal wave comes. We're underwater. He stabs you with the trident. He picks you up like a fork, and then a shark comes and eats you. <laughs> and it's like that's that's a badass one. And just you know, all those trident moves were really cool. So yeah, he was my guy. He was my guy. He was a really good player. Mm -hmm. And the storyline wasn't too bad because it was kind of like a a um, what you call it like a Justice Lords yeah like a Justice Lords scenario where in an alternate universe <laughs> Superman turns evil and takes over the world or something puts him under martial law I find it it was kind of more like Flashpoint because remember Aquaman and Wonder Woman were going to like have like a big battle or something in the streets but don't want to spoil that much it was yeah. a good game you guys need to check it out like he's like Jackson said it's great if you like Mortal Kombat fighting games or if you like superheroes it's a perfect blend of those two. Perfect Susan of both. Yeah. And then also, the, we can even talk about the predecessor a little bit here. The Mortal Kombat oh. versus DC Universe is kind of the predecessor of Injustice. Uh, but that's a good game too. So if you see that in the bargain bin for a couple of dollars, I'd pick that up. Because, uh, you know, the fatalities and the heroic brutalities and stuff in it are pretty top-notch as well. So, uh, yeah, check that out. Check that out. So, um, next one I wanted to um, discuss, I know we probably won't discuss it for very much, but I wanted to bring it up because I always enjoyed it as a game. Um, the Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction. Uh -huh. I always dug this game because it, it, um, it, it was an open-world game, um, and but the... The design of it was kind of like a rampage like game where you get to run around the city as the Hulk and like you can just destroy anything. You can destroy buildings, you can destroy buses, cars. I think you can even pick up people and throw them and stuff. It was just like a it was a kind of a rampage like game and um you know you could take a bus and then smash it and like surf through the streets with it. You could like take a car and you know, break it in half and make like boxing gloves out of it. Like I said, when you can, there's like a sprint button, you can hold it and like you're running. And like if you, you don't just like hit a building and like stop, you like start running up the building. And then like you can jump higher and farther and stuff as it goes along. So it does really feel like a great rampage game. You actually feel like the Hulk within this game. And I thought that was really cool. I never really played it that much. And I don't really remember what happened to it. I think it must have, game must have broke or whatever, but. It was. I always remember that as being a really fun, cool game. Yeah, I don't remember a lot from it, but uh, but yeah, it was a solid review of it. It was a solid review, Jackson. So we need to go get a PlayStation Two yep. and go play it again. The only Hulk game that makes our list. Yeah. Well. Yeah, because there's that one based off the movie that was terrible. Mm -hmm. Um. You want to talk about the Lego games? Yeah. Yeah. Lego games. Um. The Lego games. You know, they're they've always made like. You Lego know, Indiana Jones. Lego Indiana Jones, Lego, Lego Star, Star Wars, Wars, Harry Potter. There's a uh, Lego Marvel Universe, uh -huh. which is it's almost sort of just like Ultimate Alliance, yeah. to where you just have every Marvel character in there as Legos. And they're fighting and, Doctor Doom. <laughs> I mean, and you fight Doctor Doom, which is uh, yeah. I mean, it's cool. It's a Lego game. All the Lego games are pretty much exactly the same, except this one. You know, you get to put together. Yeah, you, you know, get to put together your Marvel, you know, your, your Marvel team of Captain America, War Machine, Iron and Beta Ray Bill, or Winter Soldier, or Star Lord for all the matters, Nova. So yeah, it's just every character you could think of in there. Yeah, and I really like the aspect that it would be like that, and then you could also like in between missions, you'd be like in a big open world like area, yeah. and if you wanted to, you could swing around as Spider Man or fly around as Iron Man or. Turn into the Hulk. You could be the Hulk and then turn into Bruce Banner and then run around and then turn back into the Hulk whenever you wanted to. It's like the perfect Marvel game 
But it's Except not a game. Except it's Lego. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, that it's Lego, and that kind of is annoying because you have to, like, build stuff and, like, do all these, like, weird... <coughs> there's all this weird, like, quirky, like, stuff that's within... That's always in more Lego games mm -hmm. that kind of sucks when you're playing it. But it's still... It is still fun. We haven't ever beat it, but... You know, every once in a while we'll play it. Yeah. And also, uh, Lego Batman 2, uh, I have played a little bit of. And as far as I can tell, Lego Batman 2 is the uh, DC equivalent of the Marvel Universe Lego thing. Because, I mean, it's not just Batman. You get to play as Superman, Shazam, Wonder Woman, you know, just... You get to play as Superman, Batman, Shazam, Wonder Woman, everybody, all the Lego characters that uh, you could want to play as, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah they're, I mean, it's they're, pretty good. Yeah, they're both great games if you're, like, you know, if you're really itching to play, like, oh, I want to play as Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman and everybody, but then it's like, but I don't really want to fight fight them together, like Injustice or whatever, then you can play that one, or if you're just like, man, I wish there was another Ultimate Alliance, but I've played it too many times, you can play that Lego one, so I think it all works together. I think it, it it works as a solid game just because, like I said, you get to play as everybody and it's fun that way. But just like you said, because of all the Lego stuff, that kind of brings it down a bit for me. Now, I have not played Lego Batman 3. I assume it's kind of the same, except it's got even more characters. But you can play as even uh, Jim Lee, a uh, famous comic book artist, and Kevin Smith. And, and Conan O'Brien. Conan O'Brien. You get to play reason. as all these people that, like, you don't play as that aren't like superheroes. I think in the Lego one, the Marvel one, you play as Stan Lee at one point. Yeah, you can be Stan Lee. He turned into the Hulk. But I do like, I think, Jim Lee in uh, Lego Batman 3. His powers is he can throw pencils at people, <laughs> which uh, I think is great. All right. Well, on to the next one, Jackson. On to the next one. Um, X-Men Legends. Very similar from the same studio and everything that did um, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Pretty much the exact same thing except with the X-Men only. So you, you know, you got your Professor Rexes, your Cyclops, your Wolverines, your Magnetos. Yep, get to play as everybody, all of the X-Men. So. And the Brotherhood. In the and the Brotherhood one. too. Yeah, it was a good game. Well, you don't get to play as the Brotherhood. You get to only in play the second as the one, one. Though, In the right? second one you do. But yep. in the first one you only play as the X-Men. Yeah. But... Yeah, yeah, that, it's totally good games. I never got to finish the, the first one here because uh, some tragic things happened to our disc, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we let a friend borrow it, and uh, he doused it in cologne. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I did play the second one. I got it on PSP, again, because uh, it had another one of my favorite obscure characters. Uh, Nate Gray, X-Man, oh, yeah, was in the PSP version. <clears throat> and uh, so I played through with X Men, and uh, yeah, yeah, it was great. It's just like Marvel Ultimate Alliance, but just with the X Men. So mm -hmm. uh, and it had Patrick Stewart voicing Professor X. Yeah, 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 and it had a Apocalypse in it that actually looked cool. In the second one. In the second one, yeah. Yeah, in the second one, it had Apocalypse was the main bad guy, whereas in the first one it was Magneto. And in this one, you know, like Jackson said, you get to team them up. Team up both the Brotherhood and the X Men to fight Apocalypse. They find a common enemy and with them. And like Jackson said, it is a better version of Apocalypse. And you, if you play this, you will be saddened when you go see the Apocalypse movie and see that he looks like Ivan Ooze. But I digress, Jackson. All right. Both great games. Both should be played over and over and over again. Yeah, well, maybe we'll say over and over and over again, but yes, be because they need Stop. to be played over and over and over again, so that we can get more of these games and we can play more of these games over and over and over again. Yeah. But did you have anything else to say, or nope? Are you good to go? I am good to go. There's another X Men movie though. When yeah, next X Men game, video game. Yeah. yeah, I know. I'm about to bring it up. All right, now, this movie is terrible, but it is a movie video game that actually that actually is better than the movie, I would say. It's probably the first time and probably only time that will ever happen. <laughs> but um, it's X-Men Origins Wolverine on... Um, you gotta make sure it's the you gotta make sure it's the PS3 Xbox 360 version because I think the Wii PS2 version is like something different. But um, it's um it's of course based off of 2009's X-Men Origins Wolverine, Ugh. that terrible Wolverine movie that they made. But the video game is awesome. Because um, 
it's kind of like God of War, Mashem, Hack and Slash video video <laughs> game. Where but you with just, Wolverine. But with Wolverine. So, like, he gets to pop his claws, and you're just cutting up people. There's blood. There's gore. You're, like, ripping missing people limbs. in half. Missing limbs. Cutting people's heads off. It's just gory and gory. And as you actually do get shot up... Like, you get to see the damage done to your body. So, like, if you take enough damage, you can actually see, like, your skeleton and all this stuff. And, like, you, you start out with, like, a, um, a, a tank top, a white beater. And then as you get shot up, that goes away. And, like, your skin starts forming back up so you can see that a lot better. Now is one of the coolest things about that video game. But um, you got something to say? No, no. I mean, yeah, it's an awesome video game. I would say, like, if you're uncertain about playing it, you ought to play it. At least go on the YouTube, watch some of the cutscenes. You can see some of the violent stuff, like truly Wolverine stuff happening, but with Hugh Jackman's face. So, yeah, I thought it was it's a really great game. It's one of the only games that I've ever seen that is better than the movie. So, yeah, get out and get it. Yeah, I know, which is strange because this game, like I said, I think this game tra this game transcends the movie. And I mean, it you know, graphic graphics wise, there are some glitches and stuff, but I do think that it is still way better than the movie because you see the movie and you're just like oh this is terrible then you play this video game and you're like oh man this is amazing he's just ripping people apart he's just a monster in this game and then you know it just it didn't do anything for video games like that like you know they never made a sequel that was like this or anything like that and i think there was i don't know what i don't know what happened to it but it was an amazing game i'd say it is probably one of the best movie video game tie-ins that's out there like i said spider-man 2 is one of my favorites and i think this is probably a close second cool yeah. i mean because what else is there nothing crickets nothing <laughs> crickets nothing oh that crickets it's a video I'm game saying, <laughs> cricket man yeah i don't know no. what else no there's no other good movie video games the green lantern movie video game i've heard actually that one's not too bad <laughs> The Iron Man movie video games? That one no, is terrible. Now, like I said, I've heard that one's not too bad. Because they're like, this one's better than the movie. <laughs> That's not saying like, much. It's better than the movie. Um, it's not bad. But anymore. finally, I wanted to end on these this series because I know that this is probably our favorites. Um, I know you don't, you haven't really played all of them. Like all the way through, I have. but uh -huh. But you have played enough to kind of get a good understanding of them all. Yeah, I um, almost. Uh, well, let okay, me let okay, me get okay. let me get out with the, right, let me get right, out with right. what I'm talking right, about. Right, okay. You're, you're talking about Justice League Heroes, right? No. Well, actually, I did forget to bring that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about that one real quick. Justice League Heroes. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's all right. Um, it's it's like Marvel Ultimate Alliance, but with DC characters. With DC characters. You only you get, get to play, play two at a time, but you get to play as like all the Justice League. I thought it was pretty fun. The graphics were great, and when you played it as Zatanna, it was kind of annoying. <laughs> because like, Volta, Volta, Volta. You just look up some clips of that, and <clears throat> you'll you'll kind of get a good under gripping of what it is. Like I said, it's like Marvel Ultimate Alliance. You don't get to choose your characters, but you do get to like get costumes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, John Stewart Green Lantern was the Green Lantern in there, so I thought that was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to play as a Flash, Batman, Superman. Martian Manhunter, yeah, it was it was a pretty good game. I, if you like stuff and you like old games, you can check it out. I guess. Yeah, yeah or not. just check out clips of it. Or I mean, you get like I said, you get a good grip of it if you watch it and you're like, oh man, this looks really cool. Then yeah, try to you know if you have a PlayStation Two or something like that, go back and play that because that was that. I think that's a good one too. I mean, it's like I said, it's not as good as Ultimate Alliance, but it is still solid. It is pretty good. Pretty good pretty good but on to back to what i was saying but there is a game that's actually very good it is probably the best super comic book superhero video game ever. definitely it is definitely like it's like uh well okay i'll just say it. uh the arkham series batman arkham asylum um arkham city <coughs> arkham knight and mm, arkham origins <laughs> and arkham origins um but, yeah, it's like we said, Marvel has a lot of them, has way more than DC, but DC just makes them better, you yeah. know, a lot of times, like with Injustice and this one, I mean, they're probably the two best superhero video games out there, mm -hmm. so, but Marvel's got a lot of them, they got Ultimate Alliance, they got, you know, 
um, all the Spider-Man games. They have a lot of Spider-Man games. Okay. And I think that's kind of the problem, though, is that they oversaturate with the Spider-Man games. But Arkham Asylum uh, was the first one in the series. And uh, you never, you, did you ever beat that one? And then, uh, I've never beat it because Arkham Asylum uh, and Arkham City, really. I've started both of them, and I always just get lost because I am not Batman. <laughs> but you get to be the Batman in these games. Yeah, but I'm not as smart as Batman. I'm just a stupid man. So I can't navigate this Arkham Asylum. I'm just like, I was already in here, and I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's what a lot of, um, especially Arkham Asylum, is just a lot of like backtracking and going back through, but... Um, the games are really great. I think that these do make you actually, especially once you get into the open worlds, worlds like Arkham City Origins and Arkham Knight, you actually do get to feel a lot like Batman in the sense of like gliding around, grappling and fighting crime whenever you want to, beating up people in the streets and stuff. It's, it is a really great game. And like I said, it com comparatively to that Hulk game, it really makes you feel like Batman. And I would have to say probably Arkham City is my favorite one. Um, they, the first first couple games, Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, were written by um, probably one of the best Batman writers, Paul Dini. Um, he wrote, you know, kind of the treatments, I guess, or the storylines for both of them. And I thought Arkham City had a lot of great, had some really good, like, ink capping off points and... Um, some good ideas and good... It had a really great opening, which I don't know... Have you, you've played it before, haven't you, the opening? Where uh, you yeah, where you're um, getting captured by the penguin. Well, no, but you you start out in your... That's where I got stuck. You got... Um, well, you start out as... Um, you're, like, getting electrocuted. Universal. You're getting, like, interrogated by Hugo Strange, and he's just like, you know... You know, you're stupid, Mr. Wayne. And then it cuts between, you know, you being interrogated and you... And not you being interrogated as Bruce Wayne and Bruce Wayne walking up to like a podium talking about Arkham City, which is kind of like Escape from New York. It's mm -hmm. a way where they've all like encapsulate, encapsulate, ugh, put all the bad guys from Arkham City and like Blackgate Prison and everybody into like a cut, a uh, cutoff point of um, you know Gotham, and they've put them all in there. They called it Arkham City to where they can free roam, you know, have homes and everything like that. But it's just become run down and terrible. And um, you start out as Bruce Wayne talking about it, and he's like, Arkham City this is stupid and needs to be destroyed. And then you get captured by Hugo Strange, and Hugo Strange eventually tells you that he knows that you're Batman. And so you start out, you know, as Bruce Wayne. And once Hugo Strange leaves, you know, you get to, like, rock in the chair and eventually get out and beat everybody up. And then, you know, like you said, you eventually, like, walk through all these prisoners and stuff, and they're like, Brain's in here! I'm gonna kill you, Wayne! And then eventually, um, Penguin gets to you, and you get to, like, beat up Penguin and stuff, and you break his arm and stuff. And it, it's just a really cool, like I said, I thought it was a really cool beginning to a video game. I know Arkham Asylum's got a cool one, but it's just, you don't really get to do anything. You're just, like, walking through Arkham Asylum with the Joker. Mm -hmm. But, like I said, it, I think with the games, you get the, the Jokers in it, and, I mean... All of them have the Joker in it, and all of them are great because they have the Joker in it, and they, he's got some great lines and stuff, especially the ones with Mark Hamill. But what do you think about him? You know, I know you've only played the first couple ones in Arkham Knight. But... Yeah, first one, I thought it was great. I couldn't, I couldn't really beat it or play it, but I was like, you know, man, I'm glad this exists. Second one, I'll be honest, I was a little, uh, I was a little unhappy with that one. I just thought uh, that the whole like Escape from New York thing was more like. You know, I just didn't feel that Batman-like, but uh, but I haven't played it, so I can't really comment. I'm sure it's the best game. Uh, Arkham Origins, I haven't played at all, um, and Arkham Knight is the one that I really got the farthest in. I almost beat it, so I consider I've played it all, but I get stitched up by a tank battle, uh, because I'm not very good at the tank battles, so I'm, I'm very close to being at the end of the game. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm stuck at Ivy's, uh, plant, <laughs> uh, getting killed by tanks, 20 tanks or whatever, and yeah, I, I can't, I can't take that, so, so yeah, you know, all the games, you know, awesome, they're the best, they're the best superhero video games, I mean, it's, it's pretty awesome, all the Predator missions are just fun, just to play, like, over and over again, it's, it's, it's awesome.
Yeah, it is great. And like you said, I I think the th- I think the last one kind of is hindered because of the Batmobile. I like it and I like the fact that they try to make you use it, but it's also kind of like it's a little bit too much. Do I have to use it all the time? <laughs> like sometimes it's sometimes I like to just grapple around. Now, I do love the Batmobile. I like I like yeah, going I through the great. streets and like you know, just destroying stuff like as you're running over it. Mm-hmm. But I do think, and that I do like the tank energy. battle sometimes. But I mean, yeah, they're like every ten minutes you got a tank battle though. That yeah, was how I don't was. like the frequency of tank battles. The uh, yeah, it's a frequency. Yeah, frequent. frequentliness of the tank. Well, battles. you could say frequency as there's a high frequency of tank battles. Okay, yeah, I don't like that. There's a lot of tank battles <laughs> every ten minutes. And, you know, I don't like that I can't finish this game because i got to protect Ivy's plan from all these tanks. Can I just figure out a different way to do this? So, yeah, I think it's a little bit hindered, and that makes it probably a little bit less good of a game. But it is still, it is still great. It's still really awesome. I mean, they bring back the Joker in a way, and like I told you after I played it, it is probably the best cap-off for Batman and the Joker. Mm Mm-hmm. In, if you wanted to do that, like, in terms of their relationship, because it does dig deeper into, like, a relationship that they have. Not like a a relationship, but a, mm-hmm. you know, a back and... Not like one of those relationships, but like a back and forth type of thing. And it finally ends with Batman being like, I don't need you anymore, Joker. You know, I'm Batman or whatever, and I don't need you or whatever. <laughs> Batman, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Batman, damn it, get on my head. Okay, let's talk about... Um... The Ark, the ending of the Arkham series, and let's talk about the Arkham Knight. What do you mean, the ending of the Arkham series? Well, let's talk about Arkham Knight first. Okay. Um, what did you think about the, the reveal of Jason Todd as the Arkham Knight? I didn't think it was surprising at all. Oof. You should have known it was Jason Todd, the way the guy sounded. I think they should have made his voice at least sound a little different, like a little more deeper and like yeah. muffled. It was like something. clearly, you or know, something. the guy who did the voice... Uh, was it probably Nolan North or... No, <laughs> but guy? it was somebody that had, like, a younger sounding yeah, they, voice. Yeah, they did, like, a real, like, young guy sounded voice. So it was like, clearly this guy is Jason Todd. You know, before the thing... Before the game even came out, it was kind of like... The Arkham Knight is probably either, like, the Joker or Jason Todd or something like yeah, that. Yeah, well, because I never thought it was Jason Todd because, for one, you never... I never heard his voice. You never heard his voice in the trailers or nothing. No. So you, I always thought it was probably going to be the Joker or something like the Joker never died and he's just the Arkham Knight. But that was very similar to how they did in Arkham Origins. So I thought, well, they can't just do that again. And I'm sure Rocksteady won't just do that again. And I didn't think they'd do uh, Jason Todd because I thought... Why not that, just make him the Red Hood? Yeah, because why not just make him the Red Hood? And I thought that was too obvious. And they had a Red Hood story pack coming with it too. So I thought, oh, well, this is just going to be like... You know, Red Hood's in the game, but he's Red Hood. Yeah. But Yeah, I mean, as far as the twist, I really just wish, instead of him being the Arkham Knight, the way that the game went, I would have rather him had just come back as the Red Hood. Because if you know comic books at all, like if you've ever read a Batman comic book, you knew who that was from the start. And, you know, it was just like, why not just make him the Red Hood from the beginning? It just It just seemed like it would have been better for that for me. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, that that's what diminishes it most for me. Not necessarily the tanks or nothing, because I like the tank. The tank's fine. The mechanics and everything like are great. Frequency. But I just didn't like the fact that it was like, okay, well, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal for me, and it wasn't that big of a reveal. Because it's like you said, I mean, Captain America Winter Soldier, I mean, everybody that's read comics knew Winter Soldier was Bucky, yeah. but they still made the movie, and they still called him Winter Soldier because... You know, that was the thing. That was how it was in the comics. Yeah. Nobody else knew it was Bucky, but we all knew it was Bucky, and mm-hmm. we all knew it was going to be him. I mean, the dude looks just like Sebastian Stan from the last movie, so we all knew it was going to be him and everything. We saw pictures of him without the mask, so we all knew it was going to be him, so it wasn't like a big reveal when they were like, Bucky? But it was a big reveal to them, and I think if you had made him Red Hood and you had given him, like, you know, yeah. just made him be like, I'm Red Hood. It would have been better. Yeah, I feel like they made him the Arkham Knight for two reasons. Reason one, they wanted to do this Jason Todd story, but they were like, we want to make it a surprise, so if we call him the Red Hood, everybody will already know. Number two, because, you know, they got to have Arkham in it somewhere. Have to have a reason to call it Arkham something. Yeah. So, if it was the Red Hood, they'd have to be like, Arkham... 
Red Hood? Well, they could have called it Arkham Knight and just been like, ooh, because it's Arkham the Knight. Dark Knight. <laughs> yeah, they didn't really have an excuse to call it Arkham something. I mean, they could have called it Arkham Knight and just been like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's <laughs> a, I mean, I would have accept, accepted that. They could have just been like, Arkham End or Arkham's End or yeah. something. Yeah, Arkham's End would probably be best to be like, this is the end of the Arkham games. But yeah, yeah. But yeah, to me, it'd be like tantamount to making that Winter Soldier game and Winter Soldier movie and renaming the Winter Soldier something else just to try and keep a surprise when... You know, you don't really need to do that. It's yeah, it'd be that like it's like anyways. it's like making it Captain America: The Last Avenger because in the first one it was called the First Avenger. It's called yeah. the Last Avenger, and then this guy's walking around and he's like, "I'm the Last yeah. Avenger," yeah. and it's like we and all know it's he, clearly Bucky. He looks exactly <laughs> like Sebastian Stan, the actor who played Bucky in the first one. We've seen you know set photos <coughs> of him walking around. We know it's probably gonna end, and he's got a metal arm. Mm -hmm. And at the end, we know he's gonna be like, "I'm the Bucky." And he's like, who's Bucky? And um, yeah. all that. So. so, yeah, I didn't like that. He still ended up being the Red Hood, but it was just kind of like, he should have just been the Red Hood from the beginning. It wasn't like, it's not like it was, oh, I'm so surprised. I mean, like I said, that wasn't the final reveal anyways. Like I said, there was, you still go fight Scarecrow, and there's some more stuff after that point. But mm -hmm. but it's called the Arkham Knight. So yeah, that was the like big the thing. thing. That was the big him. draw is that you were like, who's the Arkham Knight? Who's the Arkham Knight? And like I said, there was a lot of stuff that was too obvious, like with the Joker and with him being Jason Todd, maybe. You know, I heard that theory of that he's going to be Hush mm -hmm. and that, like, you're Hush and that he's Bruce Wayne. Yeah, I think that was Paul Dini's <coughs> theory that uh, that you've been playing the whole time as Hush, as uh, Tommy Elliot, you know, and he thinks that he's Batman and the Arkham Knight is the real Bruce Wayne who's been locked in Arkham for, like, the last... 10 years or something and it's gone insane so yeah yeah I thought that would have been cool <laughs> that would have been cool I let's talk about, I mean yeah let's talk about the ending the <clears throat> ending like of the game yeah where Batman kills himself and then becomes like a ghost <laughs> <laughs> or whatever uh, <laughs> Which, yeah that could be construed well um cause in the <clears throat> game you know Scarecrow's like always wanting to try you know, Scarecrow's main mission is to try to make Batman scared of everything and so at the end of the game he captures like Tim Drake and Commissioner Gordon and is like you know Batman I need you to come here so that that way you can um so that way I can make you scared or whatever. <laughs> I can scare just, you. And so Batman arrives and he's... <laughs> come here so I can scare you. Batman so Batman arrives and he's like, oh yeah, you're going to scare me now. And they strap him to like a, de a chair or whatever. And like um, Scarecrow starts stabbing him with needle stuff. And he's like, oh. And throughout the whole game, uh, that's a, it's a big thing. <laughs> throughout the whole game, you get... Um, you realize that in Arkham City, Joker gave his blood to a certain amount of people, including Batman. And those other people all started showing signs of like being infected with Joker poison. And they all started slowly turning themselves into the Joker. Spoilers. Spoilers. Yeah, spoilers! All of them. Um, so they all slowly started turning themselves into Jokers. Green hair, white face, everything. And Batman st was slowly st showing signs, like slowly, like t his eyes would turn, turn green and then he'd go back to normal. normal. And at the end of the game, um, Joker finally is able, takes control of Batman's body um, after Scarecrow sticks him with all the fear toxin. And so at the end, you know, Bruce Wayne's gone and Joker's taken over. And then you go through like this weird, you know thing through the Batman's mind and um you know the Joker is Batman I guess and he's running around and it's you know Batman's world but with the Joker taking over and it's destroying the world and stuff and um <clears throat> you know the Joker you know slowly starts to see that like Batman's coming back in his mind and he's like oh Batman you know you need to just you know let me take over everything will be okay and he's like you know, you slowly start to see everything starts shifting and changing. And, like, Joker turns down a hallway and it's, like, some weird, like, cave cavern-like area. 
And as he's walking, there's like statues of Batman that's appearing like next to him and stuff. And he's got to like shoot them down. And there's just, and at one point you enter like a big like graveyard looking field or something. And all these Batman st statues start appearing as you're turning the camera and stuff. It's kind of like that Doctor Who episode. And then once you turn one, when you turn one more way, you know, Batman's there and he like grabs you and chokes you. And he's, you know, Kevin Conroy gives that great line, I am vengeance, I am night, I am Batman. And then throws Joker into like a jail cell or whatever in his mind and locks him up. And he's like, oh, Batman, leave, let, don't let, leave me in here alone. You need me. I need you, Batman. And then he's like, I don't need you. And then like he comes back as Bruce Wayne and Scarecrow's like, you know, be afraid, you know, and he takes off his mask. <coughs> And shows the world that he's Bruce Wayne. So everybody knows now that he's Bruce Wayne. He's because he's streamed it on YouTube or whatever. Mm -hmm. So everybody knows that he's Bruce Wayne, but he's not afraid anymore because he got rid of the Joker. And so Scarecrow's like, you're not afraid. So he keeps like stabbing him with like his fear toxin and he's like, I'm not afraid of you, you know, Scarecrow. And he's like, oh shit. And then um, Red Hood shows up and like shoots, shoots Batman out of his locks. And um, then Batman, like, beats up Scarecrow with, like, one arm. And he's like, you... And, and then Batman stabs Scarecrow with his fear toxin. And then he goes crazy. And so Batman saves the day. Crazier. Crazier than he already is. <laughs> but throughout the... But, you know, at that point, then it's like, everybody knows he's Batman. Once you 100% finish the game, then what happens is you initiate what's being called Nightfall Protocol. So what happens is, like, you go, you um, call the bat plane, you go to Wayne Manor, and, like, all the press and everybody's in front of his house, and he's like, you know, everybody, all the press, Vicky Vale and everybody's like, Bruce Wayne just arrived in his bat plane or whatever. And then Bruce Wayne is walking up to the door, and he opens the door, and Alfred's there, and he's like, are you sure you want to do this? And Bruce Wayne's like, yes, we have to do this, Alfred. It's the only way. And he goes in, and, like, as he goes in, like, a, sec a couple seconds later, the Wayne Manor explodes. And, like, the whole building just, like, collapses and is destroyed. And everybody's like, oh, no, Bruce Wayne's dead. And then it jumps, like, six months or something like that later or something. Mm -hmm. Some time pass. And, like, Commissioner Gordon's given, like, a big monologue. Mm -hmm. And he's like... Ooh. Tim Drake is getting married. To yeah, Tim girl. Drake's getting married to Barbara Gordon, which is weird, but whatever. Um... You know, because it's usually Dick Grayson and Barbara. But, um, you know, Commissioner Gordon's giving this long speech about, like, how, you know, Batman, you know, was a symbol and everything like this. And that now that that symbol's gone, you know, is the world going to be, you know, the same? Or is it going to be different? We don't know. There needs to be, we don't need another hero, or do we? Mm -hmm. All this stuff. And then um, at the end, you kind of see a similar thing happen to, like, what happened with Bruce Wayne's parents. This rich-looking um, father and uh, mother have their little son, and they're bringing him down an alley. And some creepy-looking uh, robbers, <laughs> some creepy-looking robbers follow him into the alley and, like, held, held him up gunpoint. You know, then you see the whole thing happen, the pearls. You know, the aiming and the aiming at the mother and the father and stuff. And then all of a sudden you see, like, you know, the silhouette of Batman sitting on top of a, like, building. And everybody's like, you're not Batman. Batman's dead. And then you see, like, him, like, like kind of, like, lift up his cape and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, like, he jumps. And then it just, like, turns into, like, a scarecrow-looking, like, weird dream with all these bats and it goes like into like a hellish nightmare looking thing yeah. and then like you see like the face and stuff of batman like morph into like a laughing jack-o-lantern looking thing mm -hmm. and then it cuts to black and that's the ending yeah very ambiguous very, very ambiguous. like ambiguous. i said clearly batman died and became a ghost of the night <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah it was just kind of a it was kind of a weird ambiguous ending I wasn't a huge fan of it, just because, you know, yeah, I mean, I just wish we could have seen something more finite for the end of the series yeah. of uh, great video games, but uh, but yeah, that's what we got, though. Yep, and um, I hope that Rocksteady does other games. <clears throat> I think they did a really good job with Batman. I know, like they said, it's harder to crack, like, Superman and stuff, mm -hmm. but I think you could do, like, The Flash. The yeah, Flash would... Spider -Man. The Flash would be alright. I mean, Spider-Man would be okay, but they usually like to work more within the, you know, um, 
world like Batman is, where it's like, you know, you can hide in the shadows and stuff and do stuff. And I just don't think Spider-Man is like that. Spider-Man... Yeah. Sp- Spider-Man well, there's really nobody up. else other than Batman that's like that. Though. I know, but like I said, I think you should just try to do other video games. Like, you should do, like, a Justice League video game or... A, I mean, try to do a Superman video game, because I think... Like Superman Returns, the video game for that movie, it had mm-hmm. a it had a good flying mechanics. It's just the game was shit. So, it's just, you take that good flying mechanics, you mix it with the goodness of Arkham's games, and you got a good game. Yeah, I, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a coder or nothing, but I just wish I want them to try to do more games like this with other characters. That would be cool, but I know it probably would be harder to make that mechanic and make it a lot easier to replicate. Which yeah, is I feel like things. with like any other superhero, Rocksteady would have to completely create whole new game mechanics and just, yeah, it'd have to be totally different games. Like a Superman game, you can't do any of the same stuff as the Batman <laughs> game, except like... To, Detective mode. <laughs> yeah, you could do detective, detective mode. Detective mode, but like, there's no need for like any predator missions, or even fighting, like the cool like fighting system, because Superman could just be like flick with a finger and beat any of these henchmen. Well, you know what he'd have to fight? Robots. robots. <laughs> <laughs> and even robots. Superman should be able to just like, because robots are not alive, he can cut loose and just like laser vision all their heads off. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, they'd have to completely change up the game mechanics for any superhero. Well, I I heard somewhere that they were talking about doing a Suicide Squad video game for the movie. That'd be good. That'd be cool. Because, I mean, that'd probably be easier for them. Yeah, because, you know, going with guns, I mean, you could do, it'd be almost like a Batman game with guns. Which is like Metal Gear. (laughs) (laughs) Which is like, yeah, like a Metal Gear Solid or something. But... Yep. But anyways, best games. I love it how like best game uh, ever. we went through all the other games and we're like, you know, yeah, man, Shattered Dimension was good. And then we get to like the best game and then we're like, you know what? We're going to nitpick this. <laughs> <one."> <laughs> well, it's just like I said, I think Arkham Knight was the problem just because there were a few things. I mean, because it would have been probably the best one, but it had a lot of, <laughs> had some problems to me it personally. It had two big problems. It had two big problems and I think it's like you said, the ending was... It was not finite enough. It was way too ambiguous and too weird. I mean, it's not even like ambiguous, like a Christopher Nolan ambiguity. Yeah. I felt like it's if like, they had ended it like The Dark Knight Returns, to where it's like, you know, you see, like, Batman has faked his death. You see him again down in, like, the basement with Alfred or something. It just seems like, I mean, to me, if they, if you assume that, that Batman faked his own death... He would have definitely had to have told, like, Tim Drake, Batgirl, and Nightwing. I mean, you didn't really see that, though. Yeah. You didn't see them be like, oh, I'm so sad Batman's dead. I mean, you just saw them go, you just... But you didn't see them. That's the problem, you didn't see enough. It was so ambiguous. It was way too ambiguous, and that was my biggest problem with it, is that it wasn't ambiguous like any other thing. They, well, when Batman said, when Batman, like, there's, there's these missions in the game where you're, like, fighting with Nightwing against, like, some penguin thugs or something. And the last mission you do, he, like, tells Nightwing, like, hey, this is the last time we're going to see each other, ever. So, I mean, you could kind of go off of that to say that, you know, it's either he died or he went underground and, like, is completely cut off communications with everybody else in the Bat family, which I just feel like isn't isn't Batman. I don't, like... Usually, like, when he's gone underground and stuff, like in The Dark Knight Returns, he's usually kept up, con- you know, communications with everybody else he knows. I mean, Green Arrow was even there. Yeah, I mean, it's, <clears throat> it's like you said, I just think it was too ambiguous and it didn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... It uh, left more questions than it did answers, and it and I understand they were trying to leave it ambiguous, but they left it too weird, too, with the whole, like, scarecrow, like, nightmare vision. Yeah. That was like, so is he using scarecrow gas now, or, or is, is he, he like, a ghost. or is he a ghost, His or what? Of it's, I think I think it was supposed to show that like he was supposed to be, a, you know, again like a symbol that he for was fear compensating again. Compensating for his, you know, lack of losing his symbolicness because now everybody knows that he's a man. He's compensating that for that by using scarecrow gas. Which also, I just feel like isn't a bad. Well, I don't know if that's it. I just think that that was it was supposed to be more of a symbol or like a legend like thing where like at the end, you know, you see Batman and you're like, Batman's dead. 
But then it's just like he looks so creepy and scary now mm -hmm. that like, or you think Batman's dead now and that we don't know who this guy is, so he's so creepy and scary, yeah. like a scarecrow nightmare. Or maybe Batman is dead, but he's not a ghost, and this is just from prolonged exposure from all that uh, <laughs> yeah, fear all that gas, fear gas that permeated the city throughout the rest of the game, so that they just see things for no reason, and it's like, there's no need for a Batman, because pretty much everybody in Gotham is crazy, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, it's, like I said, it was too ambiguous at the end, and <coughs> the Arkham Knight reveal kind of ruined it for me, but it was still, it was still It didn't awesome. ruin it, it was just I like mean, it didn't ruin it, it was just kind of like, and it was still awesome. Too many tank battles. It's still great to play, it's still awesome, great fun, great cast. It's the only one Mark that I've Hamill, been able to play a whole lot. So. Mark Hamill, Kevin Conroy, um, Jonathan Banks, yeah. as Commissioner Gordon, they all are in there. It's a it's a great cast. It's not written by Paul Dini, but it's it's pretty great. Um, but yeah, do you have anything to say? Nope. Is that it? I think that's everything on video games. Yep. We spent a lot of time on that. Yeah. This on... is a mega sized episode. One more thing though. Um, I don't know if anybody may uh, may email in or whatever and say like, hey, you guys did not. Uh, you guys didn't touch on uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, and to that I say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not big fans of Marvel vs. Capcom. I just Capcom never got stuff. it, so, you know, maybe one day we'll talk about it, but I just... Uh, yeah, I, I preferred the Injustice over that, because Injustice, you know, I just never cared for the big... I preferred every game that we've talked about today over that, even the bad ones. I mean, I don't know, I, I just, I just, I mean, I Some just, I don't really like, love it. I just don't like the fact that it mixes it. You know, I liked Injustice so much because it was just strictly DC. It didn't look so cartoony and stuff. I think that's my biggest problem. It's so colorful, well, liked, so weird I liked looking. Mortal Kombat. It hurts you your eyes. <laughs> I like the Mortal Kombat versus DC. I'm just not a big fan of those Capcom fighting games. I love Tekken, love Mortal Kombat, but uh, yeah, the Capcom Street Fighter video games have just never been my thing. Never been my bag, man, but I know people like that a lot, so I just wanted to bring that up at the very end before we move on to the next chamber. The final and last chamber. What is the final and last chamber? I always forget this one. You always forget this one? Oh. Every time. Oh, I don't know if I can say it, Jackson. It's recommendations. Recommendations. All right, so you got anything to recommend this week? Yes, I do. Okay. All of these games we just talked about. <laughs> <laughs> Every one of them. Every single one of them. Nice. Okay. And well, if you, and if you I mean, need... we've talked about why you should recommend them. Yes, so. why you should recommend them. I'll leave a description <laughs> below of all the video games we talked about. So. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Well, my recommendation is not all the games we've talked about this week. My recommendation for you is to... For me? Well, for the listeners. Is for you <laughs> to... <laughs> Every time I say listeners, you're like, what listeners? Nobody's There's listening. nobody listening! <laughs> we do this for nobody. Well, we're just doing this because we're um, sociopaths and we just like to hear ourselves talk. <laughs> yeah. I feel like uh, we may be like in some sort of zombie apocalypse doing this <laughs> doing this podcast for no one. Is there anyone out there? Is there anyone out there? No, Tell us, we're listening. I am recommending uh, the TV show Cartoon Young Justice which was uh, an amazing superhero TV show, if you've never seen it. I, I recommend going back and watching this show, because this show is awesome. Now, if you guys, if anybody was like me, when I watched the first like couple episodes when this debuted, I was like, ah, oh, this is bullshit, I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I went back and watched the rest of them, and this show is like, this is, I mean, all, like all DC cartoons, like, Brave and the Bold, all the Tim, uh, Bruce Tim ones. I mean, DC just kills it with cartoons, and this one is no different. This is just amazing. I would suggest to go watch uh, the two, uh, two, seasons two seasons of Young Justice that it got before DC canceled it. Uh, not DC, uh, Cartoon Network canceled it. So yeah, yeah, it's it's a really awesome show, especially yeah, really the second awesome season. But, but it does. But I I hope I hope <clears throat> in some capacity I wish they would do it, like whether on Netflix or something else. I don't know. They probably wouldn't do it on Netflix. Maybe even just come out with like a standalone movie or something, just to finish like what they started. Because like I told second you after season ends on a it ends on a cliffhanger, and it's like I told you, it makes me mad when I watch it because it was good at the end, and you were just like. 
why did I watch this? Because now I'm just like, I don't have nothing to fill this void of anything. Yeah, now I'm mad that I never got to finish it. So, yep. yeah, it's, but yeah, anybody that hasn't watched it really needs to watch it. Yep. Anything that's, else? No, that's my recommendation for this week. Yeah. That was weird. <laughs> it's your recommendations. That was my recommendations. All these video games. Um, yours was Young Justice, Young seasons Justice one, and, one two. and two. There's Has- only two seasons. Hashtag renew Young Justice. Hashtag renew Young Justice. This is a really long podcast. Mega sized. And I hope you guys stick through it. Um, because it's. <laughs> You're telling me about the very end. It's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, for our no listeners out there, um, don't worry. I'll click on this video or this podcast like 20 times and then maybe we'll get more views. So. Till then, Jackson, let's keep it straight out of comics. What, what's, the, what's your podcast? Don't you <laughs> sign off? <laughs> well, you're just Billy Berserk and I don't ship. And mine yeah, is, Billy, uh, Billy Berserk don't ship, man. Yeah, I haven't looked at my Amen. catchphrase. It's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm so very sorry, Peter, but you're the clone and I'm the original. Was that it? I'm the clone and you're the original? No, Are you're you? the clone and I'm the original. I'm so very sorry, Peter. You're the clone, I'm the original. I'm the original. Does he say original? He doesn't say, like, I'm the... Real boy? (laughs) I don't know. I always think of... Well, because whenever I think of original, I think of, like, food. So I'm like, original or crispy spicy? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm the original. And you're you're the crispy crispy, spicy spicy clone. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's it for this week. Have a good day. Make some friends and enjoy life, I guess. Yeah.